Deshmatsi, uh, Pat, Greshna, John, uh, Fergie, Doron, Alan, uh, thank you for taking the time out for this uh, session uh, on your times that you spent with Her Holiness Shri Adi Shakti Shri Mataji Nirmala Devi on the various properties that she had um, in England and uh, in Italy and India, Pratishtan. Um, it, it had been foretold by William Blake, uh, he called them the golden builders. So it's 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 really a privilege to have uh, some of Shramataji's golden build, builders here. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, Pat, if you could tell, tell us, and this question is for um, everyone, uh, briefly, if you could answer, uh, how did you get your realization? Where were you at that point of time? Um, so if you could put a timeline, that'd be great. And what was your first experience of meeting Srimataji like? Pat, please. Uh, I, um, well, it's, I, I went to it the other, in the other interview. Um, yeah, let's say the same. We've been through that already. So, I mean, when, by the time Golden Builders type stuff started, we'd already been with Mother for quite a while. Um, you know, years even. So really, I think the other thing about the Golden Builder setup was it's quite different to most things that took place with Shimataji because it was very rough and tough, chaotic atmosphere. Uh, lots of stuff flying about, lots of uh, rubble and noise and, and dust and... Uh, walls falling down and being knocked down and mother so the way we interacted with mother wasn't quite the same as um you know mostly it would be very you'd be very uh um you know it would you'd be in, lost in awe of mother and, and in meditation and listening to her and 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 it would be an extraordinary atmosphere when when mother was there and we were building, doing building work, it was kind of different. And mother would get yeah. quite in, involved in it all, you know, she'd be around uh, all the time. But uh, I mean, uh, I remember in Brompton Square when someone put a, a, a nail through a pipe and, and, and there was a water leak, I, I jumped up and yelled, um, there's a leak at the top of my voice and turned my head around and found myself facing Shimataji about two feet away from her. <laughs> I felt like a complete idiot. But, you know, it's the sort of thing that went on and mother would be mixed up in. So it's kind of different. You know, it's... Okay. A, so what, what, what's your first memory of working on a Sahaj property of Shrimataji? Was it Chelsham Road? Was it... With me? Uh, no, it was, um, it, it was actually mother's house in her screen. All she, right. She decided to, when she was going to sell it, she wanted to, to, to be decorated. And uh, there's me and this chap called Gus there. And we, we had no experience in decorating work at all. We had no idea what we were doing. So we, uh, there were these tiny cracks in places and we kind of gouged them all out into these huge chasms and then tried to fill them with, Glasses. It looked like they were just bodged up with chewing gum and then painted them. It, it looked like a film set for a film about earthquakes. And uh, CP never said anything. He used to give it extraordinary looks. And uh, we just did our best. And the guys, people who came to look at the house to buy it, stared at it as well. And uh, I don't know what happened. Anyway, the house end up, ended up getting sold. So that was that was my my first experience, and um, after that, nothing much happened until we. It's hard to remember that the, the sequence. I suppose until um, about Brompton Square it must have been, although at some point around then we had all these um, housing co-op properties. 
all around London where we used to do all kinds of work in to make them, you know, we used to get them uh, to rent or, or rent free actually for periods of six months or a year or something uh, for this housing co-op that was organized. And we did, a, a we had to do all kinds of odd jobs to clean them up and get them okay. And uh, a couple of them I did work on the, uh, gas and, and central heating and stuff like that. I can't remember exactly what year that was. Um, Brompton Square, when did Brompton Square start? 81. 1981? Yeah, so uh, they, they were around about that time. And then okay. Brompton Square, yeah, we, we was when we were, Probably the one where we did most work. Although we did, I did work in um, Chelsea Road probably before that, before we got married in 1980, because uh, I was working there with Nick Kurzweil, uh, among other people. Oh, sorry, with another yogi. Um, he, uh, <laughs> we, we were. I mean, when we got married, there, there was no roof on the meditation room at Chelsea Road, and we had to um, put uh, polythene. Uh, sheeting over it and hang balloons and things so I, I did some work there on on the meditation room and then it was probably Brompton Square well uh, Brompton Square actually I've seen um, we've had the privilege of looking at some of the photographs of Brompton Square and the other day it was uh, shared on one of the evening meditations the housewarming at Brompton Square and it was really a beautiful beautiful <clears throat> house with so much of um, handcrafted um, things and effects done to it. Um, can I address this question to uh, Laurent? Because um, Greshna, John, Fergie, Derek and Alan, uh, you've kindly told us about how you got your realization and where you were in your uh, previous interviews uh, ages ago. So if you could have Laurent, please, on... Um... <coughs> yeah, so I, I met Srimati in 1980 in a program in Zurich. Um, the, the aunt of my mom was uh, the seeker in the family who tried everything and experienced everything. And she was working with Gregoire's sister in Switzerland. So when she discovered Srimati, she gave me a call and said, forget everything I ever told you about anything. Now just drop everything and come. So. Um, and like she was a guru of the family in a way, so you know, I, I quit the part-time job, dropped everything, uh, and within a day I was on the road to Zurich, you know, across France, across Switzerland, and uh, met my aunt there and got realization in the evening. Uh, I didn't quite understand much about the speech, it was translated for the Swiss German, so there was not much to understand there. My English wasn't that good at the time either. But, uh, for the first time in my life, I didn't, I didn't think anymore. I didn't need to think. I was just enjoying myself in the present like never before. There was no more problem, no more worry. There was just, ideally, I would have liked to stay on that chair for the rest of my life and sitting and enjoying the moment. You know, there was nothing else to be, to be asked. It was quite amazing. And following which, uh, that was a Friday evening. The Saturday we spent in the apartment of Arno, uh, the Kalbomaten, in his uh, apartment in Zurich. And uh, the Sunday morning, I had a minivan, I was sleeping in a little white van that all the colleagues here know about, yeah, <laughs> the white van in England. <clears throat> so I was sleeping in there, and the Sunday morning, I rang the bell of the apartment to, to maybe join, join with them again. And uh, Shimaji had called the yogis for puja, actually, which I didn't know, obviously. <clears throat> and uh, that yogini at the door wasn't going to let me in at first, so I said, okay, what's happening? And she said, okay, wait here. She went to Ashri Mataji and she, might say, uh, she said, oh, the, the new guy is here. You know? And she might say, yeah, it's okay, let him come. So <clears throat> I had the realization on Friday and I was uh, washing Shri Mataji's feet on Sunday. And I was so blissed out that it, nothing mattered. That was just in the cloud and everything was wonderful. You know? <laughs> That's quite it. So it was a bit of a start. And I came to England in, um, I think, in 1981. Uh, Shimaji came to France, uh, there was a seminar and she actually asked my mom for her permission to, for me to come to England for a month or so to, to help her with the house. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, so I was supposed to go to England for a month or so. Yeah? I didn't know that was going to turn into four years at the time. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and I was meant to uh, fix the kitchen door on the kitchen. So I saw great I'll go. I, we bought the doors in France. I brought them to England. Uh, the first time the custom didn't look in my van when I drove through with a van full of oak doors and tools and things. <laughs> And when I arrived, when I saw Brompton Square for the first time, I asked, okay, where's the kitchen? He said, oh, that's this room. I said, but there's, there's no concrete floor in that room, you know, I'm just here for a month to fix the kitchen door, yeah? And, and who's doing the kitchen? He said, oh, you are. I said, what do you mean I am? I'm just here to fix the doors. <laughs> so when Pat mentioned in Brompton Square, we, you know, we broke down at the wall. I think that uh, what got broken down the most was all the egos and conditioning we had there, you know, that you might have worked quite strongly on knocking down all <laughs> the big walls we had in ourselves. So that was quite, uh, like Pat says, uh, quite challenging. Yeah? I think that, I don't think there's a, a single one of us who didn't have a moment where I thought, mm, I'd like to be miles away from, from this place. It's just getting too much. <laughs> but we have great memory. Uh, yes. Fun. And you mentioned the housewarming party in Brompton Square. That's, uh, that's where I met Alan the first time. Alan, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, we were we were screened in the room and um, really tied with each other. And I was uh, sitting next to Alan, and we used to uh, swap our knees to not always have the same pressure. You know, that's how we we got to know each other. And <laughs> there's many stories, but um, I think that's it for my, this... my feeling. So I went from 1980. Okay. Uh, Got realization, moved to Paris to be with other yogis to, to learn more about it. And then six months later, I was moving to, to England where all the big things started. Yeah. And from there, it went to. Um, there was a house in Victoria I went to fix something on the apartment in Victoria near the McDonald's, if you remember. Yeah? We, Ashley Gardens. Yeah, Ashley Gardens. That's the one. Yeah. We'd, we'd go there, or she might you would ask you to come for something, and then she'd order McDonald's for everyone. Yeah. And, <laughs> Yes, beautiful. Okay. Thank you very much, Laurent. Uh, could we ask uh, John to uh, tell us about the times with Ramataji? What was the first uh, property that you worked on and what was the experience like? That would have been Ashley Gardens. Um, well, it's say work. Uh, I offered to wash all the carpets in the flat, which Mashi kindly agreed to, because I wanted to make all the carpets soft and springy for Mashi's feet. So um, that was difficult because as soon as I started working, thoughts were just bombarding me. You know, I think as, as the negativity was coming out, um, it's just a bombardment of thoughts, which I mentioned to Shmashi. Um, and then as Pat was saying, the early days of Brompton Square were very messy, walls being knocked down <clears throat> and um, not a soot and dust. And I think a lot of yogis were wearing balaclavas and things. And I remember Shamashi saying, um, I can't recognize any of you, but I know you and your vibrations, you know, because we'd all be at these weird costumes and everything. Um, I think Brompton Square, each house had its own different quality and special vibration and everything but I think Brompton Square was the the most intimate with Shmashi um, as Pat was saying Shmashi would be around all the time she uh, in the very early times she had the <clears throat> she'd wear the same shoes same sari and headscarf and everything because it she was hands-on herself she was showing out to stain and varnish and I remember um, she told some yogis off for the putting the filler on the walls it was very rough and she was showing how to do it in a very smooth way so it was very limited rubbing sanding now oh, it's how dev has joined us <laughs> <laughs> anyway she um, uh, was very hands-on um it was cold at times and um there was the midnight shop down the road and yogis took great delight in buying shmashi sausages because she won't said that she liked sausages so um she'd get a never-ending supply of sausages um but brompton square was very very beautiful it's like a, a jewelry box you know it was just so 
beautiful inside. As soon as you entered, you know, it had the beautiful screen on the left and everything was just, you know, as you're saying in the photos, just real art and craft type things and all her beautiful things within there, you know, the, and, and Shamashi, once she was there, of course, you know, then it was complete. But yeah, yeah, um, was a very special place. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Got completely, uh, spoiled and completely bastard there, you know, both extremes. But uh, I remember uh, some of the yogis talking to us, um, you know, when we went to see these various places, I think Pat, Pat was there. Um, Greshna, can't remember if you were there. There was Douglas, uh, Maureen uh, was there, and Mark. And um, so in front of Ashley Gardens, it was really, the vibrations were beautiful. And, and, and we went um, to, well, we went, visited the McDonald's, which, which supplied the endless <clears throat> burgers and uh, the strawberry milkshake, um, apparently. Um, it used to be a wimpy bar, I think, in those days. Originally, it was a wimpy, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so um, brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. Um, could I ask Fergie to briefly tell us where his journey started and what was it like? You mean housing wise? Yes. Okay, so I moved into. Um, I discovered they said that Shumachi was going to leave England because Sir CP only had a four year term. So I was wondering, oh, God, I, I, I don't I haven't I've just got my realization. I don't know much. So um, I discovered that. Um, um, because I was a qualified plasterer, I thought, well, I might as well move down to London and find out more. So um, I discovered that at Chelsham Road. Um, I moved into there, and then later on, um, Shimashi had said to me, oh, I'm buying a new house, you can come and work on there. But in the meantime, he had the house in Ashley Gardens, and I remember uh, asking, she, she asked me to go there to do some moving of boxes, there was lots of other Sajogis there, and then while I was there, the phone rang. And uh, somebody rang and was making some complaints about me. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, and then I was behind Shumashi's bed. And so I couldn't move. And she was saying, oh, really? Oh, is that true? Yeah, <laughs> Fergie this, Fergie that. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, then, and then she put the phone down. And she said, don't worry. I know everything. Mm. And, and then... I, so it was like, we're, we're all involved with dramas, but Shimashi had us there to just like see things. So, it, so sometimes we're there in a house uh, for other reasons. And then, uh, so I started work on Brompton Square, but in the meantime, uh, we'd got the co-op house of uh, Brahman Gardens, which is an interesting name. And we lived in a hotel with Shumatoji, and she was downstairs. We were all upstairs. Uh, we were all sharing with different rooms. So we were living like in luxury. I don't know what star <laughs> that was, but we were living like kings in there. And I remember uh, traveling from the house, uh, from this hotel to Brompton Square. And I remember uh, Laurent will tell you that I think Shumashi even drove in his little van uh, one day when the, the driver wasn't uh, uh, available. So, so we were going back and forward, but what had happened is that the uh, the builder was ripping off CP and he took out the main staircase or I, he didn't put it in. So Shumashi in the beginning couldn't walk around the house to see what was going on. So one day we had a Sajogi come there, Danny, he went out and bought a brand new staircase, uh, fitted it himself, and then Shumashi walked around the whole house and vibrated it. So uh, that changed um, a lot of things. And I don't, I don't know if you know, but with building workers, they have their tea room with all sorts of things in. Uh, so uh, every few weeks, Shumashi would get, get us to do something in those rooms so that their negative vibrations wouldn't sort of stay too long. And then uh, 
one day the builder came, uh, I told his story before, uh, to the house, but he was a kleptomaniac. So uh, Shumashi had asked him to come in to tell him off. So he was big and really sort of arrogant and, you know, because he was taking all the money. So he came in, but because he was a kleptomaniac, as they said, just as you come in on the left, there was a cabinet with little trinkets in. So he picked up one of the trinkets and put it in his pocket and was waiting for Shumashi to come out of her room. Everyone knows on the landing. So uh, I saw that and I was thinking, wow. And then all of a sudden uh, I thought, I need to say something to him. So I said to one of his workers, oh, can you tell your boss to put that thing back he just stole <laughs> from the cabinet? <laughs> so he, so he, he was a completely oblivious that he put it in his pocket. He just picked it up. So, so I, I, I took it from him and put it back. So he was on the back foot and then Shumashi came out and she just, I don't, not many people have seen Shumashi in a wrath of God mode. <laughs> He, she just blasted him. He saw this, normally CP was dealing with the builder, but he never, I don't think he'd seen Shumashi. She was quiet and not saying much. She just blasted him. And he was, he was a completely finished. <laughs> After that, he made sure that the workers did the work. He did, uh, you know, everything was done well and everything much went much better. Because, and also there was a, I think there was a car, um, I'm not sure if it was a carpenter. He stayed on after, after we didn't need them. But um, they had a hard time, the builders, because the Sajogis didn't have any tools. So they kept taking the non Sajogis tools and they would, uh, the man would say, What's my hammer? And it would be at the top of the house. Some Sajogis did take the hammer because they were. Actually, Fergie, I was the only one with tools on the building side, which was why okay. I was my yours then. because I was chasing after my tools all the day. By the time <laughs> I went up the top floor, found one, went back down, said so the next one was missing. Yeah, uh, so I, <laughs> tools were definitely an issue there. Yeah, so we had dramas all around. So the so after the builder left, one of the workers <clears throat> uh, enjoyed our company so much. He said, "Can he carry on working there?" Which he did, but he complained that every morning he would come along, his whole body would come out in a rash because he, he used to drink gin, uh, he, he said. So when he came into the house, because of the vibrations, he would come out with a rash. So we, we were telling him that he needs to, you know, get his realization and, and, and do side yoga, but he, he managed. So every room there was a drama, everywhere there was a there was a drama. So that was my first sort of initial uh, time. Great, thank you for that. Uh, could we ask Alan, um, was Brompton Square your first experience working at Shumatshi's, um house? Yes, yes it was. I can't remember whether at that time I was living at Chelsham Road or at uh, Nightingale Lane, probably Nightingale Lane, I can't quite remember, but um, I can just remember walking in to Brompton Square and it was like walking into uh, the universe uh, with with uh, all the the yogis trying to sort of sort out all the problems of the universe and untangle. Sri Mataji was basically clearing us out. I don't think it had anything to do with the building work. It was more to do with us cleansing ourselves through the work we were doing. And uh, like uh, I think it was John was saying how everybody was dressed in balaclavas and bobble hats and weird, weird outfits. And I thought, blimey, this is really weird. I thought it was very weird because they were all stripping wallpaper off the walls. They were causing destruction, basically. No, nobody had an idea of what they were doing. So, uh, but uh, it was great fun. And um, I don't know if at that time there were I don't know when the builders came in. When did the builders come in, Fergie? No, I think I think uh, CP contracted them in the beginning to do a lot of the main oh, right. work. Okay, I, yeah, I they, they did the. They started off doing laying the concrete floor at the, in the basement with the uh, waterproofing it all and all that right at the beginning. And yeah, and I, I think I did that. 
Yeah. They were they were tiling, you know, the the bathroom and everything. Uh, but in the end, Shmashi got uh, yogis to take over. But yeah. what I remember was that actually. Uh, Sir CP paid the, the builders and the, the first batch of builders ran away. Yeah, they didn't yeah. do the work and he uh, and he paid them. And this was the way um, Shimataji sort of arranged this, that the yogis, so then she said, why don't the yogis come in and do the work? Yeah, um, the came to the rescue. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sir CP was very grateful to everyone. So he was very yeah. nice to everyone. and. And it was uh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I must have arrived in between the builders then. And it was just the Sarjogis in there. And I was just amazed at what havoc there was everywhere. But um, Mother didn't mind. She was, it was, you know, she was joyful about everything and would come round and tell us what to do. And uh, I also remember uh, later on when the builders did arrive, this thing of the tools. And uh, I think they used to call the Sajogis the loonies or something. What have the loonies <laughs> done with our tools or something? Just remember this. So they were all the time, we would drive them mad because they'd get a tool back. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, it would disappear again. So they, they really didn't know how to handle it. So um, I haven't had any, apart from some, some uh, laboring on building sites, I hadn't done any building work. And Sri Mataji said, uh, oh, you're going to do the carpentry. I think Laurent was the carpenter. So uh, she started me doing little jobs around the house. And uh, she used to, when she used to meet people, she used to say, oh, um, I, you know, I taught Alan carpentry. And uh, it was true. She, she taught me everything I, I, everything I knew about it. So, uh, yeah, um, I have I have many stories, uh, but I can't just leap into them. Um, oh. um, how old were you at that point, Alan, if I may ask? 1982. We're talking 1981, uh, isn't it? So briefly, not precisely. About 25, 20, maybe. Yeah, mid-20s, 20, okay. Or maybe, something like that, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I got my realisation when I was 23. That was in 1979, yes. so... So we're talking 81, 82, so uh, yeah. So how was your journey from Bristol um, into the thick of things in London? God, it's so long ago, you know, these, uh, they, it's so far back now, pulling these things out. Um, well, I'd been in Bristol, Fergie got his realization in Bristol yes. and he he very quickly got, uh, realized that he wasn't gonna get the information he required. <laughs> and decided that he was off to London. So after he'd done that, uh, and I'd been around for a while, I'd been in Cheltenham on my own for a year, just giving people realisation, telling them about Sarge Yoga, which was great, actually. Because when we came to Sarge Yoga in those early days, we didn't have any information. I mean, now we have so much information. I think we had one sheet of paper. It was a unique discovery. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was uh, written by Srimathji. Mm, yes. Going to tell me if that's true. Is that, was it Srimathji that I think, wrote? I think it was a, a you know a draft of a speech you gave. Ah, was it? Okay, yeah. Awesome. So we had that and a, and a chakra chart, and off I went to uh, in Cheltenham for a year, just um, giving realization, and it was such a great experience. I had no no fear about it. I had I'd had such a sort of transformation within myself and such a faith in Srimataji, or all the crazy things that were happening around with Sarjogis or whatever, it didn't matter. I I just knew who she was. And um so I would just approach everybody anywhere. And uh, I can remember very clearly being in, in a, a nightclub. I was a barman in a nightclub um, as a Sarge Yogi. I wouldn't call myself a Sarge Yogi at the time, but I had my realisation. And uh, I used to just start talking to people about it. And before you'd know it, I'd have a big crowd of people around me. And uh, they were just uh, amazed at the things I was telling them. But at the same time, I think they thought I was a probably a bit of an eccentric 
because uh, I mean, in those days, to say you meditated, it was a you were had to be a bit strange. Uh, it wasn't accepted like it is these days. So I spent my time in Cheltenham for a year. Uh, I had a girlfriend at the time as well, and um, went through a lot of sort of um, got quite attacked, I think, because of that. And um, so there was a whole process in that year, and we ended up getting split up and of Bristol because my sister was here and um, spent some time here. But uh, like Fergie, like I say, like Fergie, I decided I would go to London. So I moved up to London, straight into Chelsham Road, Ashram. That was an experience arriving there. It was, uh, I think there were about, um, there was a girl's dorm and, uh, and a men's dorm. And I don't know how many men, there must have been about between 10 to 15 of us in the room, in our sleeping bags. Like sausages. Like sardines. Sorry? Like sardines. Like sardines or sausages. See, she actually likes sausages. We'll say <laughs> sausages. <laughs> and uh, it was my first night there. And I got into my sleeping bag on the floor thinking this is all a bit strange. And uh, lay on my side, no mattress, just a sleeping bag, head on the floor. And all of a sudden I felt this... Uh, warm sensation in my ear and I thought what's, what's going on and it was one of the yogis of the past that is no longer around I think I don't know whether he was called the monk or something because he was he was always had a mass of scarves around his neck so he was oh. <laughs> 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 something you know all the time <laughs> midsummer scarves out here you know and bobble hat on and um he was pouring warm mustard oil into my ear. He, he knew it was my first time in an ashram and uh, didn't ask me, didn't tell me he was going to do it. and just poured this oil into my ear. So uh, my, <laughs> my whole faith was in Shimataji. But the Sajogis, as far as I was concerned, they all seemed like complete mad people. Mm. And um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say after that? Yeah, so... Um, How anyway, long did it take to recover from that uh, hot oil? Uh, well, you just sort of went into this witness state, really. Um, there were so many things going on. Like the, the, the men's room, uh, where we all were, everybody had their different routines. So everybody would have an alarm clock, and they'd all be set for different times. So an alarm would go off first about 2 2 30 in the morning with the first alarm would go off and the person would start doing all their ceremony and whatever they were doing that's the one with the bubble hat and the scarves out of here and then one by one the alarms would go off and then we also had another yogi in the room that would sleepwalk and uh, he would do the most extraordinary things he would build uh, brick walls uh, have fights with his pillow one morning, he, he, he woke me up at about three in the morning, shaking me. He was saying, meditation time, meditation time. And then he, he woke up in the middle of that and said, oh, oh, I, I was asleep, went back to bed again. So, yeah, it was a very interesting time uh, living at Chelsham Road. But um, I learned a lot there, not a lot. Those alarm clocks I remember in Chelsham Road, we only had one bathroom and about 30 people living there. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everyone had to set their alarm all during the night to get to go and have a bath. Well, and this was, is the thing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Chelsea Road was a building site. I mean, it, yeah. it, it remained a building site for many years. It was only really when uh, it was bought by another yogi that the work eventually got done there. So, uh, yeah, it was an interesting place to live. Um, yeah, uh, when you were saying about the, the routines, everyone had their odd routines. And one yogi, he would go for his wash. And before going for a wash, he'd lay out his sleeping bag, put loads of bandons on his sleeping bag, bandons on himself, <laughs> come back, and then put more bandons on his sleeping bag. When he, <laughs> then when he went off for his watch, 
every night I'd go and get this ostrich because this was my routine and I'd stick it into his sleep <laughs> as he would ceremoniously pull it, pull the cover back to get in. There'd be this ostrich and he would just chuck it out in disgust. But I did it every night. It's the only way I stayed sane there. Oh dear. It's very strange because we never had these things in the ladies' room. Did you know? <laughs> I mean, basically, we spent actually we spent um, from five o'clock in the morning to until eleven at night. We um, uh, the ladies spent their time in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. With little breaks because we were cooking all the time. We were cooking breakfast. Um, everything was falling apart. The kitchen was uh, upstairs. Uh, oh. it was, uh, everything actually, whatever you try to fix in Chelsham Road when I was living there, and that was um, until the December, uh, the feast of December 1980, when I got married, I was living there. Everything was falling apart. You couldn't really fix anything. You fix one thing, something else <laughs> just disintegrates. I mean, and in the kitchen was similar. Uh, situation so it was quite hard because uh, you know lots of people were living there as you 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 could hear but there was this tiny kitchen with just uh, a couple of uh, ladies or maybe uh, sometimes people are helping but we were just non-stop cooking and washing up I was thinking I was very new at the time I was thinking is this my life <laughs> <laughs> so roughly how many how many ladies and how many uh, gentlemen were there in in Telshan Road at this point uh, I I can't remember I know that was that was me and and Chaya permanently Names. cooking but there were ladies who were going to work you see there was Anne okay. uh, so maybe there were five ladies but they were coming and going you see so it was very difficult yeah. to say because they were visiting and yeah yeah, there were quite a lot of visitors that came. So yes, yes. when when the, when the room was full of that many men, it was probably when people came at weekends or something. So uh, we were we were really squashed in. Then. Well, for some time it was just two ladies in the in the girls' dorm. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess that's why I'm. Just sure. from abroad when uh, for Sanskar Puja in 1981, we went from. Uh, from France to, to England for the first time. And I was, I heard of Church from where the yogis live together. Yeah? And having a realization in Switzerland with all the neat, tidy building and tidy yogis, I expected a beautiful white house shining with, you know, shining white yogis, you know, nicely dressed in there. And when I arrived there, I was a bit of a shock somehow. I was like, what, what's happening? You know, <laughs> I had no idea about this aspect of Sai Yoga. It was quite, uh, I mean, I lived in Cheshire Rose some years later. I remember there was a little mouse living in the kitchen that had been named Roderick, yeah? Uh, <laughs> used to come out every now and then. <laughs> yeah. I should thought there was more than one mouse there. <laughs> yeah, this was... Yeah. I mean, it surely counts with an invasion of my, my there was something Brilliant. else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when uh, I do remember it, one particular... Uh, before we move... Yeah. Got hard Go on. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you're frozen. No, no, you can speak, Alan. All right. No, I was just going to say oh, no. John was John was such yeah, fun. Right. I mean, he was he was a joy when I was in Chelsea Road because he was the only one that I could felt that was really sane. Well, there were others, but John to me seemed <laughs> like a guy I could <clears throat> tell it, say anything to, and uh, he was very devoted to Mother. I, I, and, uh, <clears throat> there was this I, particular. Sorry, sorry. No, sorry. I was going to say that um, the person they were talking about, the one with the scar, it, I, I, he was quite good with me because uh, I used to, at one time I was used I was kicking my left big toe on upturned pavements, and I, and you know when you kick your toe, it, it's like, and you know, so I said to him, oh, I keep kicking my left toe. He said, oh, that's left narvi. So he. he uh, so he said to me, um, there's no such things as accidents. That's all he said. I just, uh, uh, and then I completely understood what he was saying and how to sort of resolve the issue. So, you know, he, he was yeah. like Pujari, you know. Yeah, it, I mean, uh, like, saying that about uh, there's no such thing as an accident, Sri Masji used to say, if anything happened, I mean, if you dropped a cup 
or knock something over. She used to say, put yourself into bandana and say Sri Ganesha's mantra. So the tiniest thing would be would come back to your your subtle <laughs> condition. So uh yeah. So um, yeah, the the uh, I was just telling you, I was just about to tell you this thing about John. Uh so John John would like to be worked on as I would like to be worked on and everybody likes to be worked on. But it, when you when you worked on John, it was a, it was a full on thing. Uh, <laughs> lots of beating, lots of massage. Anyway, on this particular occasion, I had a, a real pain in my hamster chakra. And uh, I mean, it really was painful. And uh, so John started working on me and there was a lot of beating involved and fun for him lots of fun and uh, but this pain just wouldn't go away and uh, so eventually when john had got fed up that everything that he was doing didn't get rid of this pain i decided i was going to shoe beat it so i went into the garden and i i said to myself i'm going to shoe beat this until it goes and uh, i was beating away and on the 3000th beat on the ground in the in the garden, it suddenly went inside my head like that and completely disappeared. Wow! Yeah. So uh, I remember well, the accident you, you mentioned. There was a, a, a case with Shumatri in the room when she was. Um, I, I was sitting alone with her in the room. She was drinking tea, and uh, she was telling me exactly what we talked about that nothing happened by accident yeah even a drop of water falls on a specific spot on, on the ground even that's not an accident yeah and as she was saying that a, a bit of the tea was leaking and went and went down her neck here and she says and you see this drop of tea coming down here it's just to point out that you have a problem with your vishuri now so i have to put my attention on vishuri right now it's very uh, very sweet and, and she had this Amazing, just one amazing trick she played on me to, to switch off my brain. I had a tendency of too much thinking, obviously, like, like a few others, maybe. Yeah. And uh, there was a case where I was I was working in the corridor on a skirting. I was there, and she might arrived in the house. Uh, I said Namaskar, gave her a flower, and then she and then she moved to walk toward the room, and I went bent down to the work I was doing on the ground. And as she walked away, she said. In French, she said "merci" in the French word, yeah, and and my brain couldn't take it because my brain went, "Okay, you're French, you're in England, she might be speaks English, you're there, French word." My my brain totally disjuncted of this French word coming from Shimataji, and my when my brain was just went pop like that. It was, it was totally disjuncted, yeah. I was like this, and I I looked over Shimaji, and she looked around and, and gave me a little a little look like. Like got you, huh? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. She totally pulled the switch. That's quite an amazing moment. We that's, should ask our dev amazing. his first experience working in Shamashi's houses. Where is he? Um, sorry, okay. um, there's there's a little bit of a lag on the line. I don't know what how it is happening. Whether it's internet here or elsewhere. Um, but at this point, uh, can we welcome uh, Hardev, who's driven all the way from Cabela to Vienna and actually made this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thanks. <laughs> you'd, would, would you please uh, share your journey in Sahaja Yoga and the first uh, property that you worked on as Golden, golden Builder for Shrimatiji? Yeah, so I got my realization in 85 in October 85 and um, got my realization then well deepened into my realization then in in Edinburgh where the collective was uh, maybe 20 fold at that time um, there was Melody Blythe and Alan Richards and um, yeah the few other mainly ladies there at that time and um, yeah my first experience um, Meeting the collective was, was obvious that when I came into the, the room there, I because I got my realization out in the sticks in Cooper and Fife. And um, even though at that time we were still drinking and uh, smoking pot and all sorts, every time our conversation on God came, um, I always felt um, 
uh, this this uh, feeling of the Kundalini coming up until I finally went to the first meeting where then met Melody and uh, the rest of the yogis. And um, for me, it was just obvious that that was it. That was the answer. And then um, the first time I came down to Shudi camps, it was for Adi Sri Adi Bhumi Devi Puja. And that was quite an experience for me because we'd, we'd already arranged that we'd come down to the puja. And um, I missed the bus, which uh, they'd rented to come down with. And I said, no, I have to I have to go. So I jumped into my car, filled it up with petrol and started driving down the motorway. And uh, heading down from Scotland to Cambridge, there's about uh, three different ways you could come. But for me, it was like... Um, I just started driving and within about an hour of driving down the motorway, my Kundalini just started getting stronger and stronger. And then all of a sudden I um, saw the bus that they'd rented where the yogis were inside and um, they were driving so slow on the motorway. It was just, it was incredible that they were driving on the motorway even at that speed. And um, we stopped off at the next village that was uh, a way where, where we could pull off. And uh, then I drove all the way down until we arrived at Shudi Camps. And uh, we arrived around, I think it was about three or four o'clock in the morning, we arrived at Shudi Camps. And um, I just, uh, I could, you know, I was so, my, you know, my Kundalini was soaring, you know, they were, apparently they were working behind on me the whole time when, when I was driving. And, um, and I just thought, okay, I'm just going to go for a little walk and have a puff of my cigarette. <laughs> and I was <laughs> walking down the drive with uh, Elliot, who was the son of uh, Melody, and lit the cigarette, took a puff, and the vibrations went. And um, so then I, actually I thought, I looked at the cigarette, knew it was a cigarette, threw it away, and that was my last cigarette ever, actually. That was uh, quite an experience for me, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, what was the first meeting um, with Srimataji like? The first time I met Srimataji was Shumataji? then in Shuri Camps. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the Puja, in, in, at the Adi Bhumi, Bhumi Devi Puja, I was just so engrossed in, in how many people were there. And uh, I was just fascinated with the children, you know, because the, the vibrations from the children were just fantastic. And I just found myself playing with the children. And the first time I actually met Shramataji was um, when I then came down to work at Shuri Camps. I'd taken two weeks holiday and ended up staying four weeks. And um, I remember just before I left that first time, John, John telling me, if you don't come back, I'm going to come and get you. You remember that, John? Uh, not so much, but, but you've said it a few times. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was actually yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a really strong connection with John at that time. I think it was his uh, humor, and I, I think we just connected somehow. You know, it was uh, it was there weren't very many people I connected to. I was because I was very shy in those days, and um, yeah, it was it was quite uh, it was quite a uh, uh, yeah, it was very interesting. The first time really speaking to Shramataji, uh, I think it was uh, Shramataji had uh, given out a whole lot of presents to yogis uh, at one point. I think it was 80, 86 or uh, 87. And um, quite a lot of the yogis got a present and, and I didn't get anything. And I was thinking, okay, yeah, it's not my time, you know. And um, and then again, then uh, Shramata, she came back from India and she had presents for yogis and uh, she called me and she gave me a watch. At that time, it was like, uh, I think uh, it was these uh, the Seiko, uh, the gold uh, yeah. plated watches that she was giving everybody else the year before. And uh, I was just so touched and... Um, we didn't really have much of a conversation at Shudi Camps, even though I wasn't really such a talker, you know, I was just, uh, I, I, I was just very happy being there and the collectivity. 
I think for me, the, the most wonderful thing was to see how, yeah, it was, uh, I just enjoyed the collectivity, the vibrations just held everything together, I found, you know, it was always, there was always, there was always problems, there was always, but there was also the fun things as well, you know, we had, we had so much fun mm -hmm. being together that the, the problems were less than the fun that we had. And um, um, the problem problems became less and less as as we grew together. There were exceptional situations at some points when when um, we had um, big huge discussions. That time when when Warren um, was found out that he was uh, messing around, and um, I think I was in Brighton. I'd lent to uh, Terry my car, and the cylinder head. Uh, uh, seal went on the car when I when he was heading back up and I remember driving down um, or taking the train down and then in the middle of the rain changing the cylinder head on this car coming back then to shooty camp soaking wet and the whole the whole situ situation had completely exploded where Warren was totally exposed and Bill was angry and wanted to completely annihilate Warren and um, there was people there like Gavin and uh, David and they were trying to smooth the whole situation down and trying to calm everybody and that was my first real understanding of, of, of what was really going on and I got so ill there and um, actually from the journey and coming back and and all this um, turmoil of the whole situation at that time I remember I just went to bed. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be in bothered with all this stuff. And then um, I remember waking up the next day, and I think John worked on me. And um, I was just then after John had worked on me, my, I think my Kundalini was completely soaring. It didn't bother me what had happened the day before, um, and um, that was actually. Yeah, these, these old memories really still stick in my head because I think that's where the bond to a lot of the, the older yogis then um, happen. You know, these, this bond yeah. is then so strong that you don't, um, there's nothing that can shatter, um, you know. Yeah. Your acknowledgement of uh, can I, can I Can I ask Harry something? Do you remember that time I came in a car and picked you up? Um, uh, you, uh, you you were nearby the house. You must have got a a bus or something nearby to the local village, Linton or something. And that was the first time I met you. And uh, you uh, so I came with somebody in the car, and then we gave gave you a lift to the house. You, do you remember that? I can't remember. Oh, okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> I remember uh, Harry when he came to. Uh, Shudi comes, he was very balanced, actually. And he was, uh, you say you were shy, but you were not really that shy. Um, you were just, um, you were full of joy, I think, from what I can remember. Yes, true. And you were, you, and were, wondering, long hair, so. <laughs> you were wondering, you were, you were, uh, you were wondering how you can cut your hair so your mom doesn't get upset. I remember this because you wanted you you knew you wanted to cut your hair, but your mom wasn't happy about that. I cut his hair in the end. <laughs> but, sorry, is that because, because he had, he had very you're a very strong hair? Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. He was a seat. Seat. very long when it was cut. Oh, okay. So distinct, like a really you know a very springy bush. I remember it well, and, and I was uh, sort of going into hysterics <laughs> at the whole situation. You know, it was uh, wonderful times we had together, really. Um, there was always times where, you know, the laughter would be out of control, well, for me anyway. Um, yeah. Very I, seem to remember, I seem to remember Harry wearing a turban when I first saw him at Shudy Cums. I don't that remember really? that. Never had a turban there. on when I came. No, no. that's so oh, no weird. I, I just had a lot of hair. No, turban had disappeared already when I was eighteen. <laughs> just used to I wear. Used to always, always wear my hair long, 
Maybe yeah. you had a bubble hat on. And the first time I cut it, it was down to my hip. Yeah. I know. It's just it was, uh, my hair was virtually down to my, down to in between my knees and my calves. And wow. the first wow. time I cut it, it was down to about my, my lower back. And then John cut it, then short. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a John cut. <laughs> Headshot head, head, head cut. <laughs> Everyone got a shock. I remember when I came out of the bathroom and <laughs> it was all gone. Um, brilliant. It's it's one of those characteristics with the strategy that she used to make everybody laugh, joy, the, the, the feeling of joy and um, tranquility mm. that was there at the same time. It was a different atmosphere in her presence. Would you like to share some of those uh, moments with Shimataji when you were working in different properties um, before we go on to some photos of Shudi camps and Pradeshtan that Greshna has um, very nicely um, arranged and shared? So we'll do that. But first, can we have some stories, please, if you'd like to start? Yeah. Um, Pat? Oh. I just want to say one thing about uh, if anybody remembers the, the story about Brompton Square about the wall. When she met wallpaper. A, when no, well, no, not, not a wallpaper, a wall. Okay. When she uh -huh. met asked a builder to. Pat, you remember what she met asked the builder to, to do? Oh, he, oh that, in Brompton Square, that was the bathroom yeah. wall. Oh, yeah. Finished it. And, and said to Shimataji, did you, you know, what do you think? And she said, yes, I like it quite, quite a lot. It's pretty good, but uh, could you just move it about 18 inches that way? That's <laughs> <laughs> oh. brilliant. But, but, um, it, was a, it was a wooden wall, so we had to uh, take those enormous nails out. Demolish the whole thing. Kick the whole thing but back. There was, uh, uh, about Shimataji's sense of humour, I could tell you Mother's leader joke, if you like. Uh, that was hilarious in okay. Ealing. She was complaining about the leaders uh, spending so much money on giving her presents. And, and she said, I, I keep telling them I don't need these presents. And, and, you know, what am I going to do with them? They're taking up so much space. So I said, you just give me something uh, small. So they would come with a diamond, you know, and that, that would be too much. And you... you Give me something practical, and they'd bring something on a crane, you know, for 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 doing the doing something. And uh, she went on and on and on, and saying these it's just these leaders. They keep giving me all these presents, and she said, worse than the leaders, it's these deities that keep helping them. She <laughs> <laughs> well, she loved it when we were having fun together, and she would create situations where it would obviously end up being fun. Um, there was myself, Alan, and I'm not sure if it was Laurent or one other person. She got us to put oil on our heads. Oh, God. And we really, and she, and she really got us to put a lot on. And was, but that uh, was in Pratistan. That was uh, with you, John. No, it was in uh, <coughs> well, three of us yeah. sitting together with our heads really oiled. and. And she was just looking at us and laughing. And she said, looking like royal family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember we walked into uh, Shumaji's room in Pratishtan, uh, John and I, to ask a question about the work we had to do. Yeah? So we had our question, what you asked me, okay, how am I supposed to do this and that? So we walked in there and we ended up getting each an oil massage from Shumataji. And then we came out totally blissed out. We had forgotten about the question. And we said, oh, what about those questions? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> That was quite an experience, yeah. What, what an amazing privilege, my God. Shimataji yeah. giving a head massage. Oh. This was she would get up to, to move furniture around quite a lot and to rearrange the furniture. It often end up as it originally started. But um, there was one time she was getting us to move lots of mattresses around. And she wanted the mattress from her bed swapped for the mattress at the very top of the house. And with the vibrations, we were charging around with these big mattresses. And we ended up, we came charging back into the bedroom. She was waiting for the mattress to come. We came charging into the bedroom 
and the other yogi sort of pushed it in a way that made me fall and I, I fell and the, the mattress fell on top of me right as Shmashi's feet and she absolutely roared with laughter, you know, she absolutely threw her head back, but she was really enjoying the fun. She loved it when we were all having fun and she would kind of, you know, she'd take on these different aspects. She'd be like one of the boys, one of the lads laughing and joking. And next thing she'd be, you know, Mrs. Shavastava making sweets for so CPs, diplomatic guests. And yeah, was, um, she loved it when we had fun together. I remember um, Alan, was laughing or something and my, she actually walked into the room and, and uh, he said, oh, sorry, you went all serious, like a naughty boy. And she actually said, no, no, I'm enjoying your laughter. I just have to bump in there and say, John was actually laughing because we were together and uh, <laughs> roaring we were, roaring. <laughs> And she actually walked into the room and just like two naughty schoolboys, we stopped. <laughs> We said, oh, sorry, mother. And she said, no, no, no. I, I love to see, see you. Yeah. 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 And she had a sense of humor, even when she, when she worked on us. It was one time in the, in the little room downstairs in Brompton Square that, that was used at the workshop, you know, the front room on the street side. Yeah? She imagine never used to come to that room normally. Yeah? But that day she came down and she started working on, on my Vishuddhi. So I was on my knees and she was you know, cracking my neck the, the way she does it, which is basically going, I try very quickly, you know, to uh, shock you out of it a little bit, yeah. Worked on my Vishuddhi, and then I remember the rest of the scene, like out of a Tom and Jerry cartoon, a little bit. Uh, we were next to that table, which was the, the workbench, and she imagine she looks at, on the table and she sees this big, uh, big claw hammer, yeah. And she goes, like in a Tom and Jerry cartoon, she goes, and then she grabbed the hammer and turned towards me. And I thought to myself, I'm going to run now. So I started <laughs> running and she was running after me with a hammer <laughs> all the way down the corridor. And at the end, we, we both laughed and she said, okay, next time you catch some Vishuddhi, I'll treat you like this. <laughs> I still have the hammer, by the way. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say about wow. Nataji's creativity because you remember, John, you were doing the plaster, plaster molds um, for Shimataji's bedroom and how she um, how she uh, sort of she she used a, a box a chocolate box the top of the chocolate box as a design for the plaster work I don't know no, if you it was a, a table <coughs> she, it was, it was a, a Indian it was a tin. table yeah there, uh, no, there was two things in there one was a tin like and one was a table yeah I don't yeah. remember or the chocolate box. I just remember the table. It, it had embossed roses in it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was a tin and they we, opened it out long ways. It, at that time, I was making the moulds and John was putting them up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, you, you and, put uh, them, um, you did Brompton Square, didn't you? I was and, making them and you were fitting them all. No, I wasn't fitting them then. I, I it was only at. Um, it wasn't me. Yeah, no, that. I was too busy making them. No, there is there is a video I found with a, 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 a with a non yogi mother brought over from India. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was my yeah. boss. Yeah, he was my boss. He taught me how to use it, do them, and I was making them. And that that uh, that tin, it was a biscuit tin with embossed yeah. roses. Yeah, and, and we cut yeah. it out, laid it out, and made a mold from it. And it was we used them. We used wow. them all around mother's uh, bed bedroom. And yes. the roses were painted in gold and, and uh, pink. I never knew that it came from, the, uh, from that, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's I amazing. What you're talking about, yeah. And okay. also we had to paint, we had to get some gloss paint, mm. uh, not the gloss paint, a glass paint, and we had to paint on the chandeliers pink. You remember the chandeliers? Mm. Because they were originally white, we had to make pink designs with this paint, but also Shimataji wanted something um, in the hallway on the ceiling, and she she just wanted some designs. So what she actually asked us to do, she she asked us to put some pieces of uh, glass on the Persian carpets, and and uh, paint the design of the carpets. Yeah, uh, with with German. sort yeah. of a glass a paint, at first the designs, and then we had colored paints and we filled the designs in. So all these designs of the Persian carpets were 
up on the ceiling as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, fantastic. We also yeah. painted it with glass paints on the ceiling, the design of, of the Persian. We painted it on glass. Yeah. They were on, on glass. glass. Sheets of glass and ornaments. <laughs> wow. We, it's so, it's so, so imaginative because it was so beautiful, these designs, and then they ended up in the ceiling, on the ceiling, you know, sort of like re reflecting it. Yeah. About, about the, 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 the plaster molding you talked about, yeah, there was, uh, Shimaji often made us do things we had absolutely zero idea about, yeah, and at some point me and Danny were supposed to make these plaster lines in the, in the big uh, dining room downstairs, yeah, for this uh, plaster plate to, to go in between, yeah, and so we had this kind of a wooden thing with a metal profile, we throw the plaster on the wall and run this thing to make the line, yeah. And of course, we had no idea about plaster. So, I mean, John would know most about that because he was the expert uh, now with this, yeah. So we put the plaster, but it would set within seconds. So we'd, we would throw two huge buckets per day of plaster and, and we'd do 30 centimeters on the wall that day. That's no, that was exactly before that. we started making the molds yeah. separately. And, we and then to, uh, with our shimatiji, uh, uh, you know, how's it going? So now we're not progressing, plaster drying too fast and all that. And so, okay, try to put some salt YouTube. with it, yeah? So we would mix salt with the plaster, yeah? And it wouldn't quite work, so we'd put a lot more salt, yeah? And it started to work, but then the plaster would never dry because it was always so wet because of all the salt in there. So it was absolutely probably one of the worst moments we had with Danny struggling from, from early morning to late evening trying to get the thing and, and just throwing most of it away. And it was quite... <laughs> So the other thing is, uh, the other thing is that she'd come up with completely original ideas. Uh, and before you show the photographs, uh, uh, I've got some silk here that mother uh, used, uh, got us to use as wallpaper uh, in Brompton. Silk. Yeah, it's silk. Ah, the silk from our bedroom, yeah. Yeah. It's silk cloth and we used it as uh, <coughs> wallpaper. It's really hard to hang because it moves, you know, it does, it's not yeah. stiff. Yeah. So we had to devise a method to, to get it to, to be, get each strip really long and then, yeah, then, then glue it. It was amazing. And then in mother's room, it was divided. This was up. her bedroom. Was in mother's really bedroom, beautiful. it was. was the walls in the mother's bedrooms in Brompton Square. Yeah, Absolutely. it was, it was on the wall. <clears throat> and then there'd be ornamental plaster work around the edges and mirrors alternated with with this uh, silk wallpaper and, and the embossed rose design. It was beautiful. Yeah, that's right. There's panels, wasn't it? Panels of the ornamental plasterwork and then the silk being the panels. How the silk all started, uh, Shimashi had this mirror and there would be these golden horsemen that are at the farm now, either side of the stage. And she said, um, put some, fix some silk on the back of the mirror and I said what should I use to to fix it on and she said wallpaper paste and I said I don't think it really worked and she said just try of course it worked and it went from there to doing the whole well not the whole house but m many rooms in the house with that silk mm -hmm. it didn't have any paper back in there so perhaps say you know it moves around and everything but uh, it did look really beautiful how many? I, I how remember many one times? thing how incredibly John managed to do that without putting glue on the silk. I thought, how did he manage to not put any glue on that silk? I was really no, just put the silk on the what the uh, the glue on the walls, put it up the way I did it anyway. Then, then fix it on, then pull it off again, then put the glue on the wall, then put it back. Um, I was, I went through it quite a bit because um, Shimashi kept on asking for estimates you know we all learned everything we were doing there uh, i've never done any wallpaper paper hanging or, or anything everything was learned there and um i just used to go into a room and look at it and and literally guess how many meters and um i it got to a point where i was going through something and um shimashi was telling me off for anything and everything even things I hadn't done, and I was kind of, you know, I was on the run, the negativity was on the run, and it was getting worse and worse, and it came to one of the final rooms, and it suddenly dawned on me while I was putting this silk up that there wasn't going to be enough silk, and I'd been told off so much. In, in my head, I, I was really think, thinking that um, 
I'm going to be turned into ashes, you know. I was really, really terrified. And I went to Shamashi, and she had the usual entourage of people following her around. They used to follow her around with their hands out, you know. And then every now and again, she'd say, go and do some work. And they'd all scatter. And slowly, 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 they'd all come back, following her around the house with their hands out. And um, she said, yes, John. And I really splattered it out. There wasn't going to be enough silk. But instead of busting me, she said, that man in the shop must have cheated me. <laughs> <laughs> everything was all right after that, I, you know, because I was so terrified. It must have sort of driven something out. And then all the telling off stopped and everything was fine, you know. And I felt much better as well. You know, something wow. had gone. How many so, times, John, how many times did you wallpaper some of those rooms? The, the thing, the place that was wallpapered the most was the stairs and landing. It went on and on and on. <laughs> uh, I must have really needed the vibration show. I was like, uh, you know, many problems to have been given so much work. Um, there was the there time. Was, Sorry? There was a wallpaper miracle where, you know, I think it was Lewis was one of the yogis and he'd wallpapered along with someone else to surprise Srimataji while she was away with so CP uh, on some function. And uh, so when Srimataji came back, uh, they wanted to surprise her. So, she, you know, they when she came back, and they showed Srimataji and yeah, she was very pleased. But then there was this, because of wallpaper shrinkage, there was this gap. And uh, then Shamashi was uh, the next day. She she worked on those uh, wallpaper and bandhans, and she was saying how we should uh, believe in the vibrations because they do the work. Does that bring any memory? No. <laughs> okay. No, I, I I have heard that she pushed the wallpaper together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I, uh, just say one thing before I forget. You know, you yes. John, you mentioned those golden horses that are at the farm. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, they they go all the way back to Hearst Green, to Mother's house in Hearst Green. Oh. Right. She had them, she had them yeah. there. They were. There were. There was a guy that, uh, not a yogi. Someone came to deliver something, and he was looking at it, and he said, "What are what are they? Or symbolic of or something?" And she actually said. They're the riders of the apocalypse, she said. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've got small ones of the much smaller version. I just wanted to say before before we move to um Shudi comes about uh, Shimataji's ingenious use of mirrors in her yeah. house. Yeah. And in the in at the at the entrance, the corridor in the entrance was quite small. You remember, um, and then she put the mirrors facing each other in the corridor. I don't know if you remember. No, I can't remember. They were, they were facing each other, and it, when you look, it, then the uh, then the corridor looked really huge. And you could look into infinity with all these mirrors reflecting. But yeah. also, also in the uh, in the ground floor. Now it was actually I think it was in the basement where there was the dining room, and she Mataji put the mirrors up on the ceiling. Yes, yeah, I've got a story about that. It was quite low, so it the 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 room suddenly became really tall. Uh, so the the use using mirrors was uh, quite ingenious. We used to um, talking about mirrors. We used to, we all... used to go. <laughs> it's very hard to get a word in. And <laughs> to say about the mirrored room in the dining room. The dining room was beneath Sri Mataji's bedroom, and uh, like Krishna says, it was quite a low ceiling. But the, it, the the mirrors sort of took the room up, so it made it feel higher. And we spent many pleasant times in there with Sri Mataji around the table. But Sri Mataji used to go to sleep in the afternoon. And uh, we used to go in and go to sleep as well. So we'd go into the dining room and lie on the floor in the dining oh, room. The meal. Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> while, while mother was asleep. And uh, I remember at this time we, I, I laid with my head underneath the cabinet and gone to sleep. 
and we were all asleep on the floor and Sri Mastri walked into the room and uh, I can't remember what she said but we all woke, woke up with a start and I woke up and banged my head on this cabinet I <laughs> stuck my head underneath <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but mother was very uh, amused by it she, she, she yeah. were, you, were you there at that time for that particular time yeah. job you remember well, the time remember. when we had the food in the dining room and Shimaji was actually serving the food? You remember that time? You, you were there? And the, the, the Did Shimaji the serve the food and sometimes the then? Around. And when, um, I remember when I walked in and the TV was on going loud with some Western going there in the corner of the room, yeah? When I came in the room to sit down, she might say, no, no, don't sit here. You can't see the, you can't see the TV from here. Sit there. And I said, no, this is too much Maya. <laughs> <laughs> I remember food watching the TV. Yeah. Here, giving us food. I remember watching a horror film with Shmachi at Brompton Square, and you know, you you enter the sort of the mire of the movie. You get involved in the movie. But watching the, the the movie with Shmachi, you know, it was tenfold. It was I was absolutely terrified, and um, there was one part that made us all jump, including Shmachi. We all shot back in our chairs and smash you saying Bob Ray and all this but um I remember I was completely terrified um I was so well, lost in the movie, movie. Yeah, I remember, yeah. was that uh, Salem's Bob. lot yeah <laughs> but when, since then it's very tame but she was commenting on everything saying this person is super conscious see the way he's doing this and saying see nothing's growing there because of the negativity and I mean whatever she watched she would be very enthusiastic about and, and enjoy, you know, from her point of view. The most Myrish situation was um, we were watching a video of Shamatji with Shamatji, and she was agreeing with herself and she's saying, such a good actress and things like that. But it got to the <laughs> point where it was like there were two Shamatjis, the one in the video and the one in the room it was a really weird sensation you know but it was um, interesting how she was enjoying her talk and agreeing you know. yeah such a great actress she said you know yeah you remember what she might said at the end of this vampire film i wasn't there but i heard it the next day where she would have said apparently said oh the sajugi need to watch this film about this vampire vampire movie he said yeah, they have to watch this, so that's what will happen to them if they don't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, great. Uh, Alan has to say up. something. <laughs> I've got my hand up because it's so hard. Yes, to say it, yes. I'm going to lower my hand now. Hang um, on. Yeah, Greshna, Greshna was mentioning the uh, chandeliers. So uh, I thought I'd bring up a little story about the chandeliers, how we're all in our, we're all in Brompton Square, we're all in our own little drama all the time. Mother's untangling the knots within us. And uh, anyway, we were sitting in the, we were in the front room, the reception area. And uh, mother was sitting on a chair and the sarjogis were around her. And uh, 80 chandeliers had arrived from India, the pink ones that were gonna be put around the house. And they were being distributed in these boxes into the particular rooms they had to go into. And I'd been given the job with the clipboard and uh, where each box was supposed to go, et cetera. And uh, anyway, there, were these, uh, there was a Sarjogi that was taking these boxes up to the different rooms. I'll call him Richard to save his embarrassment. I don't know whether he's around anymore. And um, anyway, uh, one chandelier, 79 chandeliers were accounted for. They'd all gone off to the rooms. And he came down and said, uh, Sri Mastia, I can't find this chandelier. I can't find it. And she said, what have you done with it? She started getting cross with him. It was just a drama. She wasn't really cross as we know. She was obviously working something out in him, but also me at the same time. And uh, she would say to him, go, go and have a look in that room. And, and off he'd scurry up the stairs into the room and he'd come back and he'd say, I, I still can't find it, Sri Mataji. And uh, this, this went on for some time. She was sending him all the way up to the top of the house and back down again. And she was getting very cross with him. 
And I was standing there with my clipboard looking at it. And it slowly dawned on me that there wasn't a chandelier missing, that it was my fault. And I'd, I'd seen people getting blasted by mother and I'd never <laughs> been blasted. And uh, slowly, slowly, I, this drama was going on and I was thinking, God, it's my fault. It actually isn't missing at all. And I, I was trying to pluck up the courage to actually say something to Sri Mataji in preparation for the blasting I was going to get. And uh, anyway, he'd gone scurrying upstairs to the top floor. And I said, uh, I said, uh, Shimachi, I said, I've just realized that it's, there isn't a missing chandelier. It's my fault on here. And she, she just stopped, looked at me with this beautiful, radiant look on her face. <laughs> And smile, this smile came across her face. And she said, she said, yes, I know, she said, but whatever you do, don't tell Richard, she said. <laughs> and I felt very relieved to not get a blasting. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Tell the plank story. The plank story? Yeah. What, the one with a piece of nail in it? No, no. Um, we called them planks. It was a scaffolding board. But, um, oh, right. right yeah. um, That's the best story in this one. used to tell us where to go and everything. And it started off the wallpapering with just the ceiling, just where, a very small ceiling. And it was embossed paper, which ended up completely flat. Um, and then it went from there. And so we, when we'd finished one room, we'd go and ask Shumashi where to go next. And she sent me to the very top of the house where the, the loft, the, the roof part had been converted. It was sloping roof, uh, sloping ceilings. And um, she said, go to the top right one. In the left top one was a very hot tempered yogi. And he had two of these scaffolding bolts. And I asked him if I could have one because there weren't any available. Oh, kind of blasted me out of the room, you know, and I just said singed eyebrows and everything. So the only other scaffolding board was a really, really long one down in the bottom, down in the basement. So <clears throat> me and another yogi had to, as we were taking it gradually up from floor to floor, we had to stick one end out the window and then get it around the corner. And as we went further and further up, it's getting more and more difficult. So when we got to the top, we had to stick, we had to take the loft hatch off and then place, place it into the loft and then try to bend it into the room. Uh, and it kind of got stuck. And while we were moving this thing around, Shmashi was coming up the stairs with an entourage of yogis following along behind her with their hands out. And Shmashi said, what's, what's going on here? And I said, oh, we're just trying to get this, this plank as we called it then the plank into this room Shmashi and then Shmash, next thing I know Shmashi got hold of this plank with me and we were both moving it backwards and forwards together and all the yogis were standing there with their hands out <laughs> <laughs> they were making suggestions you know <laughs> and uh, so we both were together was moving this plank around trying to get it out the loft hatch and then into this room and then she looked over and she said why don't you take one of his planks, because this, you know, this other yogi had two planks. So I said, well, I did ask Shmash, he wasn't very keen on me having one. So again, we was moving this plank backwards and forwards, and suddenly she just threw it down, and she shouted this yogi's name very loudly, come here! And he came out, and she said, look at this plank, she said, it's just like you, obstinate. <laughs> Give him one of your... <laughs> sort of going off on one and everything. <clears throat> he gave us a plank and then we had to take the plank, the one stuck in the loft, back down to the stairs. But we could feel that there was some Maya going on. Anyway, coming back up to go to the room, I met Shmashi on the stairs and she just burst out laughing. You know, it was just a, a play she created for this guy, you know, who was very hot-tempered and, you know, not very helpful. But, um, yeah, so... You never knew what you're going to get, really. No, no longer I with it. No. So, 
Shimataji telling somebody off, I mean, it's maximum vibration. Of course, oh. in, in, in the yogi's benevolence, of course, maximum. but yeah, what maximum. was it like? It. What was it like? Very powerful. Um, Rampant. Rampant. The room where there were about five of us, and one by one, she was blasting us, and um, she was in a complete fury with one yogi. She threatened to throw him out of evolution, but I've never felt such strong vibration. And I was, mm. he couldn't move, I couldn't move. Everything cleared out. But um, I remember I just had, left Nabi was still biting. And Shmashi asked me a question and I didn't have to answer the question because the, the left Nabi just, it just disappeared into nothing. It just mm. went into coolness. So, you know, that was the answer. What she was asking was true, you know. I didn't have to say anything. But yeah, it's the, the strongest vibrations I ever felt. And it's actually giving maximum blessings, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, uh, yeah. It was like the negativity within you would just scatter yeah. wherever it went. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, uh, very powerful. Yeah. Well, we would be, like, for instance, in Cabela, we'd be working... Uh, you know, 12 hour days, seven days a week, <laughs> yeah. and getting blasted by Shimataji for all kinds of things all the time. Yeah. And then a puja would come, and someone would come and do a little dance in front of her for five minutes and get praised to the skies and given <laughs> loads of presents. I've heard you say this. <laughs> <laughs> also, we'd be working really late, sometimes through the night, and we'd all stagger off, get into bed, we'd all just be laying there, you know, just about to nod off. And then the door would fly open and someone would enthusiastically say, Shamashi's invited us all to watch a movie. And instead of us being saying, great, we'd go, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to, I, I just said I couldn't face it one night. I remember, uh, yeah. I just, I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then, yeah. and then everyone had gone and then I thought, oh, I'll have to go. So I, yeah. I staggered upstairs and stuck my head in the door. And she imagined you gave me a big smile and said, uh, I hear you're very tired, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit embarrassing. And then then we will remember watching hours of films in Marathi yeah. with big, laughing rakshas out with big moustaches. Right. Big moustaches, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'd all be sitting there with our heads going like this and then our heads going back, you know, one way or the other. Yeah. God. <laughs> It was, uh, it was, uh, I think, a, a very significant time in laying the foundation for the new Jerusalem, wasn't it? It's just like chiseling uh, so many things and not just the yogis like you who were there uh, and the others who aren't here. That's that. It's, it's uh, an amazing story. And um, Shankarji and I had the privilege to uh, visit the house that uh, Srimataji actually made. It got constructed in Lucknow um, in the 1960s, it would have been. And it's in the shape of the Star of David. And the um, kitchen is on a different level than the sitting room and the bedrooms and the bathrooms, again, arranged differently. Um, was there any, any? I mean, you've, you've told us about the mirrors and how the silk was on the wall uh, as used as wallpaper. Was there any other aspect that Srimataji took care of, like, or suggested, which would um, sort of be for um, design and auspicious purposes that you could share with us? Well, the, the, in Pratistan, she designed everything from beginning yeah. to end and, and was incredibly creative. She... she, oh. she came up with all sorts of ideas and, and uh, most of the architects who were there were completely uh, bamboozled by it. They couldn't understand it. Uh, but it, everything was was like a new idea, a new this, a new that. It was, uh, you know, she designed these pillars um, made of bricks. She just just worked it out by building it up with her hands. You know, the, the way the pillars would, would, would make, you know, round pillars, but with but bricks put at different angles. Uh, the, the dumbbells for the uh, uh, bedroom that I, had to, that I had to make, she designed all those and um, everything really. All, all, the, uh, 
all the stuff, the stonework at the front of Pratistan, she, she brought from some palace in Rajasthan, I think, hmm. and, yeah. and had it all reassembled in the front there. Um, it, the whole thing was just designed from, from beginning to end. And then she got me to make loads of molds, uh, both in, in glass and in concrete, of, of, and used it throughout the house in all sorts of different ways. So it was all, you know, she just, like the, the, the main staircase, um, she, she, they, they built it, but mother didn't like it the way they'd done it. And she kept telling them to um, knock it down and start again. And uh, as soon as she was driving away off to another Sahaj tour of Australia or somewhere, they'd start arguing all the architects about mother surely couldn't mean that we should take them down. And the last time she came back and said, what do I have to do? Take a hammer and break it myself. You know, and she got them to knock it all down and rebuild it. And, and well, just... Were these Sahaj architects, sorry? Or, yeah. or just yeah. professional they were yeah supposedly yeah, they were, but they were they very were... um they they were you know very different from us i remember one was a lady <coughs> architect indian lady and uh, i was making these molds in in concrete for the dumbbells and when i, I just put my finger my hands into the concrete to, to mix it and she actually screamed in shock that i touched the concrete you know, she was very, very not not hands on at all. Uh, it was. Um, yeah, it was, it's a different world, isn't it? When it comes <clears> to labor <throat> and everything, the the main labor force at Rajasthan were uh, when I was there was um, a Raj Rajasthani women who would turn up immaculately dressed and everything. Um, yeah, it was the same in um, Cabela. She actually designed all those pillars on the stairs and everything um, but it did get to the point where Shimashi didn't say anything she knew I knew which cornice which which or um, coving went in which room and uh, I was really grateful in healing I was let sort of let off the lead and I was given this free reign also in Cabela while I was putting the three angels up above the reception I had all these people coming up to me saying, did she actually ask you to put them up? You know, and things like that. But I just carried on. And when Shmashi came back from somewhere or the other, she looked up and said, wow. So I, I felt reassured. Really it was good, you know, it's like a glorious entrance to Shmashi's um, apartment, you know. But yeah, she had fantastic ideas. Uh, they, had, they had the curved coving that would go, is, Instead of going from the ceiling to the wall, she had it lowered down the wall and then she got us to put strip lights behind so the light came out. In Ealing, I put uh, all Sri Ganesha's within the coving in her bathroom and there was angels flying along behind and she loved it. She absolutely, I wasn't there, but um, Padmini was there when she first saw it and she was calling to CP to come and see it and everything. So we were very, very lucky. The, 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 angel, the angel I found in the shop in Cambridge. What, the big one? The big one. And I brought that and we took the moulding of it in. I was passing the shop in Cambridge and I thought, oh, wow. So I yeah. bought it. I said, it may come in handy. And then, uh, then we took it to, we had it at Shudi uh, camps. Then we took the, I got a man down from Birmingham, plaster and expert, and he made the mould for us. And then afterwards, we took it to um, Cabela. And there was a time when Shumashi, uh was sitting at the front, looking out towards the fountain. And she asked to see me and I came up the stairs and it was, I sort of had a whole vision of the end of creation. And there was no, no sunlight had been coming in her room because all the windows had been um, covered with the plastic. So I came up the stairs and Shumashi's face was very like down and drawn. And uh, as I came up the stairs, Shumashi and CP had the big main doors at the back where the fountain was opened, looking out. And I came up the big main staircase and I, I just went like that. And she turned to me and she said, you see those, that angel up there? She said, John Watkinson put that up and I can see the vibrations 
come in uh, from that angel. I couldn't see the vibrations. You know what I mean? So I, I, I just, I, I just was looking. Uh, I've taken a photograph of it for, for people to sort of see if you feel. But she said, you know, the vibrations are coming from that uh, angel. And then she turned to me and said, the the scaffold which is outside, um, that needs to come down, or something's going to happen. Mm. And then my whole I just saw that, you know, that picture of the uh, uh, of the end of creation, which in Michelangelo has done. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, and I was thinking it can't come down because plastering needs to be done first. And uh, anyway, we, we did it. And but I just saying about uh, the angel and then the Ganesha, which John was talking about, we put I found it in a shop in Fulham. It was called Ganesh. I, I was walking around and I I saw this little Ganesh. I thought, oh, that was beautiful come. Ganesh of that, really. And I bought that and then we took a mold of that. And we, since then, we've made, uh, we took um, a mold, um, made a cast and we've, we gave it as puja present one year, a few years ago. So things are still going on now. Oh, so. I remember there was a Hanuman puja when uh, at. Uh... I think the Hanuman Puja was in, in Brighton. That was Margate. 1980. Margate. Margate. Margate yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, we had decided to make a whole load of Hanuman figures out of polyester. And we'd made one for Trimataji of um, uh, virtually 90% bronze. And we made about 500 of these uh, little um, Hanumanas at that time. That was a really nice thing and Shamataji was so over overjoyed when when we gave her when we offered hers her on this you know after at the, as, as a puja present and then she was saying what well, you made 500 of these <laughs> that was really quite nice we must have gone i never saw one of those i don't think <laughs> now as much as you know Shamataji was she always encourages us to use handmade things and natural things. Uh, at the same time, she really was very practical. You know, like if, if something is not easily available, there would be something better. Is there any kind of uh, instance that comes to your uh, attention that you'd like to share, please? Well, there, there is a story about the, the kitchen, about Shumaji being practical and having a, a own style. Yeah? So we had... Uh... We'd, we'd got all the, the wooden doors with this, uh, you know, this sort of shape at the top, you know, this Louis 15 shape, yeah, uh, oak doors for the kitchen, yeah. So we brought a certain amount of doors according to uh, the requirement. Yeah? And um, when the kitchen was coming to, to an end, there were two cabinets which were open without doors because we didn't have doors fitting for it, yeah. So we had uh, two doors which would have sort of fitted in the width, but one was longer, one was shorter. So I said to Shimaji, oh, we could leave it open, put a glass front or something. Say, no, 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 you can, uh, uh, she said, uh, turn the doors around. So you have the, the rounded bits at the top, yeah? And so I turned the door like this uh, and then cut them in length, but like that they were fitting. But I said to Shimaji, oh, you can't put this rounded shape on the side. That, that doesn't belong to the style. And she said, no, no, it's Niamala style. You, you do it, yeah? So I had to actually make one door smaller, which was a bit complicated enough, yeah? And I had to fix the door sideways like that, which of course, for my conditioned ego coming from a carpentry school, you know, I was a bit disturbing at first, yeah? And she would say, no, that's Nimala style, you do it like that. And as if it wasn't enough to tickle my ego, every time a yogi came in the house, that they would look at the door and say, oh, I don't want you put the door the wrong way around. Say, no, it wasn't me. What's your <laughs> <laughs> every single time. So. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> amazing. I don't know if you remember the, the ceiling of our bathroom in Brompton Square, this uh, Carl's panel that they asked me to, to, to fix there. John, you remember that, that whenever one of us needed a good clear out, she would send us to do something in the bathroom and we'd be boiling hot in there. Everything would come out of us. It was so incredibly strong in there. Um, but it was beautiful, this carved wooden panel making a dome on the, on the ceiling when you came into the to a bathroom from Tosco. I don't know if we have pictures of that left, but it was quite amazing too. We we have a video. I found the I found the video. Linda had given the video to somebody in Australia, uh, South Africa, oh. sorry. And then I managed to get a copy and put it back together. So it's on it's on Amruta. So 
Paul Winter made a video of the house. Yeah, before it got yeah sold. that's true. Yeah. Paul Winter did so one. It, yeah. it, it shows every room. Oh, brilliant. I remember um, I remember talking about Sri Mataji's bathroom. Um, I remember I was doing some work in there. And um, I remember finding lots of Sri Mataji's hair in the bathroom. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but if, if you are, you, Sri Mataji has to give permission for you to have her hair. Uh, I think it's Kali, isn't it? God of death. Yama. Yama. Yes. Sorry? Yama. 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 And uh, anyway, I gathered up this hair and I, I got a little wooden box and I put the hair in it and I had it for years, I did it for a long time. And um, well, I had it until we got married, I think. And I uh, had it in this little box. And then somebody said, oh, you, you know, you, you shouldn't have Sri Mataji's hair unless she gives it to you or gives you permission to have it. So I started to get really panicky about this box of hair that I had, uh, thinking something brave thing was going to happen to me. So we, we took this box of hair in Bristol. We have, um, there's the uh, triangular dock, which is the Kundalini of Bristol. And it has a jetty that goes out into the middle. So on this particular day, the yogis, we went down there and we went out to the middle of the Kundalini of Bristol at the end of this um, jetty and sang uh, Sri Ganesh's names and, and sang uh, Sri Mataji's mantras and offered the offered the little box of hair into the water. I thought, well, I should send it to the elements. Um, so we put it into, into the water. And it was a day when the sky was absolutely blue. There was not a cloud in the sky. I mean, it was a, a glorious day. And uh, we were standing there. And as we got to the end of Sri Mataji's mantra, if the vibrations were really strong and we knew we'd done the right thing. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we got this little shower of rain on our heads. And we looked up above us and in this clear blue sky, there was one tiny cloud just above our heads. And as though it was a, a, a sort of confirmation that we'd done the right thing, uh, we gave, were given this blessing of this little shower of rain. Amazing. I, I remember being there, but I don't remember. I remember organizing the trip because I've got the map of, of Bristol, which I showed to Shimashi years later to get it confirmed. I, I, I know the story because I was there. All I remember is a light shower of rain, but I don't remember that you put hair in the water. That's don't you? Yeah, it was a little, little wooden Indian box <laughs> with, um, in, in, with uh, inset brass or something on it. Yeah. Now, in 97, Shimachi said to me, come and see me before you leave to go back to England. So I had the map of Bristol and I first saw it. I bought it from the museum. They sell it in the museum. I, I, I brought it to her and I said, oh, I found this map of Bristol. Uh, and I think it represents every chakra is on this map. So I showed it to her and then she, uh, she drew a swastika on there. So she saw more than what well, I could see because I, I didn't notice the swastika, but I, but it, she did it so fast that even now I haven't. I, I need someone else to sort of right. figure out exactly where it was, but it is authentic. So every chakra, like the Vashudi of Bristol, Bristol's Vashudi is the bus station where everyone goes in and out. So so we so interacting with Shimashi, you get to find out things years later, you know. But I just yeah, want we... to mention before I go that everyone's talking about certain things. But what I remember is being on the building sites with Trimachi was like a cement mixer. When you put uh, bricks in it and they go around, all the rough edges break off. So after a while, we're all like in a cement mixer. And then you put a bit of water in it. And then after a while, they all become smooth and we all, you know, well rounded, well balanced. Yes. That's what's meant to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then most okay. of the time, you, know, you talked to us about building things, yeah, but they were the moment where 
she'd work out of us and, and talk about more spiritual thing. Uh, like one time she was explaining to me uh, that uh, you, you can combine mantras. You say you can say up to three names together and you don't put the Shri. So there was the example of a Nirmala Vidya Groa Lakshmi Vishnumaya. You can say those three names in a row without mm -hmm. the Shri in a mantra. Yeah. So you can, she said you can combine up to three names enough to put Shri at the beginning of each. You don't oh. need to, to do that, for example. So it was a little, uh, um, a little, little example. There was this, this moment. There was also a, a funny story where at the beginning, I was very new, uh, working in Brompton Square every day, and uh, I'd heard of foot soak, but that's as far as it went, yeah? And one day in the 19th gale, one yogi got some epileptic fit, and got sick, and I was just sitting with Shimaji alone in that, that uh, drawing room in the, on, the ground, on the ground floor, and she was telling me about him. She said, yeah, I know what it was like. It was like this, it was like that. And I could really see, wow, Shimaji really sees and really knows everything she was describing. And then she looked at me uh, with big eyes directly in my eyes. She looked like that and said, and just imagine, it wasn't even foot soaking every day. And I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it shaking inside, I think. And Shimaji left after that. I went straight to the shop, bought a, bought a bucket and put my feet in it. <laughs> I've been foot soaking ever since. <laughs> she had a very subtle way to very directly tell you. So, <laughs> it's foot soak every night is, is or every day is very important, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, there was another little detail, a short one. Uh, one day, and there was no context for Shumaji to tell me that. <coughs> I, I understand many years later uh, better why she said that. Uh, she talked about lemons, and he said, uh, she said, if you bring vibrated lemon to someone in a hospital, yeah, uh, that person has to pay for the lemon, otherwise they will not work. Because people have to take charge of their own negativity. They have to pay for their own negativity, so to speak. Oh. So that was, um, yeah. That was well, that's why you've got to get rid of it, you know, chuck it away yourself then. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so whenever you get the clear out in the ashram or something, I said, I want to pay for my lemons. <laughs> <laughs> I remember with the foot soaking with me, I mean, at one point in Cabela, Shamataji said to me that I should do more candle treatment as foot soak. And um, she told me I shouldn't foot soak every day. So, I mean, maybe that's something else. Right. I don't know. But yeah, it's a different. Everyone's different. Everyone's yeah. different. Yeah. No, there's nothing set in stone, you know, what, oh, whatever no. works for every each individual you know yeah i took try to create you know thou shalt this and thou shalt that sort of thing but uh yeah i it's took some like... i took oh. hmm? sorry i took some lemons to uh yeah. lemons and chilies to sri mataji to vibrate and uh seven lemons and seven chilies and i said sri mataji can you vibrate these for me please and uh, she said what are you going to do with these lemons I said, I'm going to put them under my pillow, Sri Mataji. And she said, no, no, no. She said, you've got to eat them. So that was that, that was that, a different view. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then Sri Mataji doesn't want us to be kind of blinkered uh, in any way. And it's always everything with a balance, in a balanced way. Um, okay, let's share some photographs of uh, Shirdi camps that... Greshna has kindly shared. So does that bring memories? No, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Sure does. Oh yes. Wow, what what an assembly of angels that. <laughs> That's at the back of Shudhi camps. Yeah. Is it? That was the back. So it's yeah, the back garden. Amazing. Yeah, the garden. What a nice back there. Yeah. Uh, next one. You can see me there in the brown. Yes, I can see you. Yeah. Thing. Yes. Yeah. And then you see my okay. little boy. And they are yeah, now wow. David Spider. Lots of people there. Lots of people. Yeah. That's the best. It's a beautiful grade two listed building. Mm. Well, With by that time, that, the, the roof had all been done. All yeah. So this is all the roof repaired. It's. Do, well, would no, you like it was all. It was all stripped off, like flat, like an air, aircraft carrier, apart from the chimneys. And yeah, how did you manage? Majority. It, 
The majority of the timber but work on, on one part of the roof was completely burnt. Um, the, the, the men who we who previously owned the house were mm -hmm. a couple of gay men who'd really basically done a, a, a botch up job and just really trying to repair it to sell the house at that time. And right. um, from what I remember with the roof, there was uh, there was uh, a few uh, Australian what was his name in um, um, Paul, Paul, Paul Henderson and Robbie Paul Henderson and what was the other uh, one Rob again Robert yeah Robert Henshaw Robert and, uh, yeah. Robbie Webb. we have no photographs we have lots of photographs of actually the work on the roof I don't know where they are yeah I've got a, I've got a, I made a actually I made a a a, 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 good, a, a golden builders uh, Facebook site and there's lots of photos there as well from not just from shooty camps also from Ealing and a few yeah, other that's a, that's a roof under construction that's the roof yes wow brilliant okay um there was some um story with the how the roof had to come out how did it hold on to the English weather what happened oh, um I, I'd like to say something what happened was that the um, Shamashi had a, a a very good idea, which she didn't want us to use felt on oh, the that's roof. That's me here. <laughs> so she, so we ended up using ste um, sheets of sheets of like galvanized metal. It looked amazing. Uh, but the built, but the actual postman was very happy with us because he said for the six weeks when there was no no roof on, uh, yeah, it, it didn't rain. So he was saying all the people in the village were happy with us. But what happened, we took off all the old oak and some people came around and they said, oh, uh, can we have that? And I said to the man, we'll let you know. And we discovered yeah. that the, the oak was valuable. So we sold the oak and used that to pay for the wood for the roof. And we got loads of uh, lead delivered to, to redo it. Uh, properly, and we had Laurent making the actual uh, windows. Some of Amazing. them upstairs. Uh, the the roof windows, yeah. Yeah. Amazing story. Thank you, Fergie. But we also had um, the inspectors came afterwards. <laughs> yeah. To see what we're doing, and so what we did, we we, we they Shumachi decided she wanted to lower her bedroom ceiling, so we had to hide that fact. Uh, and then so while they were walking around we were banging on the ceiling above them <laughs> wow. uh, we were, uh, actually we actually we lowered the whole of the roof floor yes the complete upper floor was lowered one foot to make wow. more space in the attic oh, so that's it, yeah. the attic would not have had enough space to uh, headroom, you know, and um, but that's well, uh, you better, well, we better keep, keep this in the attic also. Keep this for the future because uh, we weren't I, supposed to. I yeah, mean, I have to say it was a it was a listed building, and we weren't supposed to do any of these yeah, things. Yeah, that's the can you go back to that mold that um, that was yeah. the mold that was from the coffee table of Shamashi. Yeah. Wow, oh, coffee yeah, table yeah. from Brompton yeah. Square. Yes, yeah, amazing. Beautiful. It all got shipped to India afterwards, all her furniture. Yeah. And so it would be at Pratish Town, probably. Yeah. And we all yeah, have... Yeah, yeah, it is. There's oh, a yeah. Chinese cupboard that Shumashi asked me to paint white, and then all the detail gold, and that is uh -huh. in Pakistan now. That mirror was a present from the Austrian collectivity. Ah. Yeah. yeah. 50 oh. Austrians turned up out of the blue. And suddenly started working on the house. Uh, tremendous. Yeah. Like was, people terrible. from all over the world. It was tremendous. Yeah. I mean, yeah. tea breaks was wonderful. You know, you'd <laughs> spend time with yogis from all over. It was wonderful. Me and John so, ended up well, doing a night shift because we couldn't work during work during the day. We yeah. ended up doing night shift, remember? Yeah. Amazing. And the police and came as well. Would that be Shramataji's dressing table? Yeah. Yeah. The last two weeks we had a 24 hour shift. Yeah. And as we went to sleep, someone else would take over. 
So it was yeah. a relay. I remember I was so busy in Trudy camps, I hardly knew what was going on. First, I've heard that the you know ceilings were lowered and everything. I was just so absorbed in what what was going on, what we were actually doing. I didn't it's know amazing. we had peacocks inside the house. Oh, they yeah. were <laughs> apprentices. They used to be outside. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, when the, when the uh, the grading listing people, whoever they are, came to inspect the house, yeah, they didn't even know the floors had been moved. Yeah. They did, there was all this wooden panelling in one room, which yeah. the yogis just ripped out, which was all, you know, listed. But uh, they they didn't know. It just looks well, we, so we we were all uh, all in those areas. We were all there, and everyone I'd had a hammer or a power tool on. It's Harry. Harry it's like yeah. a racket. They ran that away. That was the room. Go back. Can you go back to that? That no, the the big room with lots and lots of sleeping bags. That was there one? Yeah, you with it was there. It's, it's got, no, no, further sleeping on. Bag? Further on. Further the other way. The other way. <laughs> other way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was an attic. attic. That's where we were sleeping. Wow. Yeah. Well, Lots at the end, uh, at the beginning. I remember we Pat going to bed with uh, ear defenders on because of the noise of the snoring. That was in the other one. That's when we were that sleeping. That was downstairs in the. Which one was that then? Um, we were down in the not... kitchen before, remember? Yeah, we were. We were down we were, in yeah, the kitchen we, when we, we took the roof in the off. Dining room. Oh, this and, is that. Uh, in the dining room, there was, uh, I remember Laurent putting a glass of water beside his bed in the night, and he woke up in the morning yeah. and it was frozen. <laughs> yeah, it was wow. frozen for, for, for two weeks. There was ice in that glass. Yeah, I, I used to warm up Amazing. the sleeping with a head dry, if you remember. <laughs> that, that picture's the kitchen, actually. Wow. Uh, this was that plumber friend of uh, yours, remember? Yeah, I remember Rod. Yeah, he was really, he was really good. He was really a lovely bloke. Did we just go back to that stage? Mm? Yeah. The one, one left, back, one back. couple of pictures. Stage, yeah, it's got you on it. A couple of pictures going back. Yeah. Yeah. See, is that the one? This no, that one there. Yeah. That's me yeah. there. Ah. Oh. But uh -huh. uh, the the <laughs> stage was the remainder of the oak from the roof was used within that stage. So, well, so, so a big chunk of the oak was sold off to pay for the lead that and and the remainder was used for the used stage. The, yeah, Amazing. The dark well, we, the, uh, oak from the roof. Yeah, we didn't know it was valuable until we I made some inquiries and then we were told it's quite expensive. That wasn't Trumashi's plan. It was just we discovered that accidentally because some well, non yogis came to the house and said we'll take it away from you for free. And I, uh, I said, yes, <laughs> very helpfully. Oh, that's so cute. Oh. Uh, Martin, daughter no, from um, the Australian, what was his name again? Martin Purcell. That was Martin his daughter. <laughs> that's Gareth. Arnaldo. Oh, fun moment. Oh. So sweet. Ah. Oh. Shamasji. Okay? So this is the sitting room? That's the, the, the reception. Room we all right. knocked it all the way through. Uh, it was yeah. separate rooms, so we just turned them into open archways all the way along. Uh, Puja's there, which she met. Yeah. She... Wow. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we ordered 300 plasterboards. <laughs> Shri Krishna Puja there from. Yeah, um... I remember the ceilings being uh, leveled out because the ceilings were all over the place. So a lot of time was spent leveling the ceilings out. And the floors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is that a video? In my hand, I've got a Oh, gosh, board. these. This, yeah, these yeah. were made, uh, Chris Marlowe made these things. It was That's like the, uh, the big tent marquee thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, and, and they were... also then moved then to Cabela and yeah. was used there for a little while and then the stage. So these, these were... From the first stage at, in Cabela was built with them. Yeah, I remember the laminated. off the back of a lorry, big, big uh, lorry, yeah. <laughs> so these were four by one 
Oh, hang on, go back. You go back a bit. There's a little and bit more made, story uh, there as four well. By one, when we were building them, we couldn't get them the up. Glue. They were laminated together with glue and then put the like, uh, like the rib cage of a whale. Mm. And then we put a skin yeah. over the top to make the tent. It was a lot of work to make a tent, I have to say. Yeah, it yeah. was that like is amazing. We, were we were always renting yeah. these tents, remember, which uh, which were mm. costing around about ten thousand uh, uh, mm. pounds every time we rented them for yeah. a long weekend. And then wow. Chris Marlow um, said to Shumati that we could make it for half the price, and we could keep it for the whole season for that whole season. And then we'd we'd glue lamb them with a, a cascamite, which is like a, a a glue which is made from uh, ants. And, okay. uh, and it, it, you can only use it when it's still uh, liquidy. As soon as it goes off once, it's gone off. So we had a huge bag of dry glue and we're mixing it every time we were planking. And then you make it, it got like to the point. A cement mixer. No. <laughs> and then it got to a point where we had to put them up. And uh, work. it was uh, the Land Rover mm -hmm. and my Sabbath uh, that we used to pull them up was uh, uh from from douglas Fer douglas from douglas who recently died right. yes douglas fry douglas fry yeah we used the uh, wow. land rover and uh my my sab to pull them up they were heavy heavy bits of wood so we had made good use of them though you know there and cabello it's amazing i wonder if uh chris Marlo is on Zoom. It would be nice to have his story as well. And any others that uh, we are not aware of, because there's quite, quite very many people, isn't it? It's beautiful times. One of those celebrations there. Mm. I think I was learning a dance. Okay. <laughs> okay, lovely. And uh, she managed to, anything that was going on in the garden, of course, she managed to could see out of her bedroom window. So you'd often see her face at the window. Wow. Gazing out. Yeah. Okay, fabulous. So there are some photos of Pratishtan as well. Nice. They, uh, if they're Greshnas, they're just the early part when I was there. I they are, they are Greshnas, in fact, because she's seven. emailed to me. And also, there are some uh, handwritten notes from uh, of Shimataji, which is interesting to see. You see, this is a drawing, but you can tell because you. <clears throat> yeah, it's one of the drawings uh, Shimataji did while I was there for what she wanted, showing me what she wanted. I was just doing the uh, cladding, you know, the, the the concrete pillars were there. And it was just a matter of sticking the plaster or, or concrete casting around the outside. Wow. That's another one. And she met a G saying, no bats, no because. No because. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Mm. This is the one in Pratishtan. Yeah, that was um, beautiful. Those are the, the pillars the that, that Mother invented. Yeah, the geometry created out of the bricks for the pillars. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, that's where she was uh, experimenting. So, Pat, you were there in about uh, 1987, was Pradeshtan. So you were there from yeah, 1987? April, May, June, I was there, maybe July, I can't remember. In 87, okay. And then was it John who was there next? Because I know you... Later on, yeah, after that. 1987 and 88. Oh, okay. They're about six months. Yeah, well, we got there together, John, didn't we, yeah? Yeah, it's just yeah. nice to see these photographs of Shamataji in like, you know, such beautiful colors and everything. Yeah, I have some amazing photos of Shamataji uh, sitting in the middle of a building site wearing a garland and uh, wow, really good photos of Shamataji from then. 
Well, maybe I think we will sort of do another session where if you email the um, or share the album on my Gmail, then it's easier to share it on the recording, on the video that we're doing now. Beautiful, isn't it? Just look at the details, gosh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I've got some finished ones when it was finished. Ah. Yes, so maybe we try and locate uh, Chris Marlow as well, see if we can um, get him. I think that is all, isn't that it? Um, beautiful, beautiful architecture. Myself, Laurent, and another yogi, Shmashi, are invited to go to um, Pratishtan. And before we went, we were each given a chandelier. Do you remember Laurent? Wow. And she said, um, not not exactly, but I know we always carry a lot of things in our luggage. <laughs> but she said, told us, asked us to, to take the chandelier each, but in a black bin liner. And the leader, hey. he got us um, Pakistan International Airline tickets, and the security was unbelievable. There was constantly looking in our hand luggage. At the airport, we had to get off at the airport where we changed planes. We had to get off the plane and there was a row of guys with machine guns, submachine guns, remember? No, 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 no. We had to, yeah. to go and take our luggage from one trolley and put it onto another for the ongoing flight while these guys were standing there with submachine guns. <laughs> so they were constantly looking at our bags and everything. And they asked, what's in the black bags? And we said, a chandelier and not once did they ask to look in these bags <laughs> it was uh, incredible <laughs> you know i think they were so dumbfounded that we had a chandelier and a black bin liner so how would yeah. you carry such a fragile thing i mean obviously it was that's bubble wrap told something. us to do you know so that's what we did we took it as hand luggage you know amazing um, yeah it was well, a life-changing experience at Pratishtan, really. It was yes. very powerful. Yeah. You're reminding me one more story, but I think we are, we've been maybe too long in time. I think I'll hold it back yeah. for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the days? <laughs> yes, uh, let's, let's, let's have one story each uh, from everybody. And I know it was particularly special as well for John, isn't it? Because that's where uh, Shimataji matched you to Padmini Um oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, a was mile. it the same year, eighty seven then? Yeah, it must have been eighty seven. We were married in in January eighty eight. Well, um, while working on Shimashi's house, it's every now and again you'd be called for some reason or other, and then you'd just end up being there while Shimashi would be talking to someone else, and you'd often not even remember how you got there, you was just there. And I was in the room with Shmashi, one room or the other, and she was speaking Marathi with this man. And every now and again, they kept on looking over at me. And then suddenly Shmashi said, what's your height? So I said my height. And then again, they, was, they were talking. And then she looked back, she said, what's your age? And I said my age. And then She's asking me questions like that. And then she said, go and tell everyone to put your best clothes on. You're, you're going to a marriage. And I thought I was, because she was asking about me, that I was getting married. And uh, all the Laurent and everyone were all laughing and joking. And um, you know the expression, my knees were knocking. They really were. My knees, the shock of it, my knees were just shaking. <laughs> I was off to get married. And um, yeah, everyone was patting me on the back, congratulating me and everything. And I was completely freaked out. Um, so we had to present ourselves to Shmashi. She said, there's a tempo van outside. And she said, oh, you know, you all look very nice. And she said, I want to speak to you, John, before you go alone. And I, I was really freaked out by then. I, I thought, that's it. I'm just going <laughs> off to get married. But then she said, the sister of the girl is getting married, if you like her you can marry her. So uh, that's how it all happened, you know. And uh, we were foreigners in this huge hall with all the Indians sitting on the floor and they got these chairs out. We we're all sitting in the middle of these, on these chairs and my knees were still, still going. 
<laughs> I couldn't control it, you know, it's the shock. But uh, yeah, so it was very beautiful how she did it, you know, she played this little game. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, Laurent. Thanks, John. I mean, the, 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 the challenge in Pratistan we had, I mean, we, we had the same challenge we had in Brompton Square in Pratistan, yeah, there was, uh, uh, I was in, in charge of a team of about 15 carpenters to organize them, yeah, and she might even say, okay, today you do this and you do that, so I would go talk to them, I would just knew five words of Hindi to just say, you know, windows up, or door down, that's about the four words I, I could handle with them and that worked. So I would go to them, I would give the instruction and they would, um, they would go up to do the work and it looked like we would do the work we were supposed to do that day, I was very happy. Yeah? But then she might would come out of a room with the architect and say, oh, we could do this here, get a couple of carpenters. And oh, we could do that here, get a couple of carpenters. By the time she finished her tour, more than half the team was busy doing something else. So there's no way we could do what she might was expecting us to do that day. Yeah? So it was uh, getting quite depressing and that's several days in a row like that. Yeah? And at some point I was, I was so desperate about the whole situation and I said, oh, I had enough, I, I give up, you know, after, after lunch, I stayed in the room, I had siesta the whole afternoon, I said, I don't care, I give up now. And I see Shimaji in the evening, she looks at me and said, oh, you're much better now. And then I understood. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it must have been something very challenging for uh, all of you. I mean, um, I mean, being with Shimataji, you're in a different realm altogether. But yeah. also the the way we do things in India is quite sort of um, <laughs> spontaneous and chaotic to uh, to the to the to the non-Indian mind, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, actually, I'll just add on that um, Laurent changed so much at Pratishtam. Um, there were three of us, and the other yogi slowly went mad, <laughs> and Laurent <laughs> slowly became more enjoyable to be with. And you know, <laughs> I, actually, we have to re reveal a little secret, John. You know that uh, uh, until Pratishtan, John and I were probably each other's favorite enemy within Sahaj. I think we, we, we you know, to, to be quite honest, yeah, I think we are. Uh, we got on. There was a sort of love-hate relationship. Yeah, yeah, we were. You know, I think we even we even punch each, punch each other a little bit in in uh, in Shuri camp. But let's leave that behind. And anyway, and and one time in in Pratishtan, uh, John became sick. He had you know jaundice or something quite you know quite quite severe. And uh, Shimaji told me go and work on John and. I didn't really want to come near John, to be honest, in those days, you know, now he's my best friend in the world, but uh, in those days, so, and I went to John, I said, John, um, she might just say I should work on you, she said, okay, do it, yeah, and I don't know what happened, I worked on him, but I remember that ever since he's been my best friend, I, I don't remember even having bad feeling for him ever, you know, since that moment, so she might have fixed that nicely by uh, getting me to work on him, and after that, it was, uh, that was it, you know. Yeah. Does, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Oh yeah, one so, thing, short, short one. Shimaji once said to me, she said, um, uh, a guru doesn't give solution, a guru gives problems to solve. And we all can testify from that. <laughs> yes. Yes. And and from that she created this amazing Sahaj family where we are uh, together as her children in any part of the world. And it just feels like, you know, family. Uh, it's such a privilege. Um, who would like to go on next uh, on sharing the um, story, shall we say? Um, we've been online, I believe, for two and a half hours now, which is amazing. But I know some of you might have things to do. Um, so let's let's have the story, the, the story now as a conclusion. So we've had uh, Laurent, we've had John, thanks very much. Who would like to have a go next? Well, I could uh, just say yeah. a little bit yeah. about Pratistan. When I got there, um, well, after we'd, I'd been there a short time, Shumataji had left, and uh, there was a big long story. There were these uh, Indian mafia people that were trying to get hold of Pratistan. It, it, they wanted the land because it gave access somewhere else and they persuaded the local collector to um, try and stop the, the building work because that was a whole other story um, 
there, were, there was no law, there was no law uh, description in law of what a um, uh, what kind of building you could have on agricultural land. And mother used that loophole to build that huge palace there and uh, ruffled a few feathers. But anyway, they they got the law, the police to come and, and serve a warrant saying that we had to um, stop work uh, on the house because it was illegal. And uh, everyone was in a big fizz about it. And I was wondering what was going to happen, whether we'd all have to kind of die on the bulldozers if they tried to knock it down or or what. And and the guy who was in charge, mother had given him power of attorney, and um, he signed the form agreeing to um, knock it down. And then mother came back and, and found out all this was going on. And she said, no, 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 if you stop work, uh, it'll never start again. So she got um, this guy who had power of attorney uh, to take some uh, strange, some strange uh, uh, medication, which made him act very funny. <laughs> and she got a, a psychiatrist yogi to write the thing saying that he'd lost his mind. And so <laughs> with that, she, she got him, got him uh, taken off his, his authority to sign the form removed. <laughs> And and that is typical of her kind of amazing way of, of finding ways out of problems. Yeah, so, I've heard this story before. Really good story. Yeah. Didn't didn't uh, the doctor um, declare him as insane or something? Some declaration. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he was all going around going, ooh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he came to to demolish the construction of Ramatiji's farmhouse, yeah. and and he was actually declared mad. Amazing. Uh, more or less uh, unfit for duty. Un <laughs> yes, yeah, that's to... it. Yeah. So um, so his the thing he'd signed agreeing to stop yeah. work was invalid. Yeah. Yeah. And the next yeah. person who got it uh, didn't agree. So. It was a big drama that went on for months, but eventually the house got built, of course. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, amazing doesn't really suffice the um, emotion or the expression, really. Brilliant. Thank you, Pat. Um, Reshna, would you like to have a go next? Um, I don't know. I, I... Um, what I can say only from what I remember, uh, this was not really, I wasn't in Pratistan. Um, no, sorry, I, not in Pratistan. I, I was asking, probably I should have clarified, more as a, a as a young mother and having that time with Trimataji whenever that happened in, in the different properties in England or Cabela probably. Any story? Uh, yes. But maybe I can... Um, because um, I can maybe tell you a story from Brompton Square. Uh, because for me, it was an unusual day. It was all very amazing. Because uh, we sometimes we think uh, Shimataji can change from uh, being not well to being uh, completely, uh, you know, fit and. Uh, and everything, because once I came to Brompton Square, I was on my own, and I think the somebody opened the door. I think it was the servant opened the door, and uh, she mother she wasn't there yet. And then suddenly she mother she comes downstairs, and she looks very unwell. You know, I was quite worried actually. I was thinking I shouldn't really be bothering she mother she because. You know, she, what is going to be, what is going to happen today? So she's coming downstairs, her her feet, you know, very heavy, and she's complaining about the human body. So she's saying this, uh, this, uh, uh, this annoying sticky thing, and she's talking about the human body. I suppose for the goddess to fit into a human body, it's not really easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's complaining about her body. She comes down, she touches the ground floor, 
and suddenly she changes into a young girl. I mean, it's completely different. Like she's changing into a young girl who is actually gliding over the surface of the of the floor. Um, so, and it's just maybe I could see her like that, you know, but I've seen her like this all day and we were working together. It was like, I was just doing something that she matter she wanted to do. I don't know. It was a complete harmony. Um, it was not, uh, you know, I didn't pro probably have to learn a lesson, but I was just learn to be one one with it somehow. Uh, so it was just so amazing for me. And uh, at the end of the day, she met, when I was leaving, there were some yogis there, but I was. I was just doing things, working in the kitchen, dusting, doing different things. She she looked at me and she said, you have done a lot of work today, haven't you? Actually, I was just following Shimataji really and feeling in. Wow. So this was my amazing experience to see yeah. Shimataji being so from one aspect to yes. another. Uh, and she yeah. was so fast. She was doing so many things all day. It was just like amazing. Oh, yeah, it's completely um, blows one's mind uh, away. Yeah. It's also at Brompton Square, wasn't it, where um, Dania had shared the story earlier where she and her mom were using the furniture polish to polish the furniture and there was very little of the furniture polish in the bottle and they kept praising the furniture polish oh very nice how nicely we're doing it and just you know oh this is done and that is done and then they were praising it so much that it actually flowed over from being very little to actually overflowing so it's it's just those extraordinary um experiences uh which just remind us that we are in the presence of the Supreme Goddess, Sri Adi Shakti, isn't it? It's just mm. our good fortune. Can I tell you... praise the petrol in the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Can I, can I tell you the story yes, of, uh, in Mother's Bathroom? Uh, people have probably heard this story before, but I'll tell it anyway. Please do. Uh, it's in the early days of... Uh, my lessons of carpentry with Shumasuchi. So I was learning, uh, didn't really know what I was doing, but she asked me to do something, uh, build a cupboard. It was, or put some shelves or something in her cupboard. It involved wood. And uh, I spent, I spent, well, probably a couple of hours trying to find the piece of wood that I needed for this particular job that I was doing in the bathroom going up and down, up and down, trying to find tools to do the job with. Anyway, I found this piece of wood that was perfect for this particular job. And uh, I was in there and I measured it. I measured the space, measured the wood, checked again, marked the wood and cut it. And uh, I offered it into the space where it was supposed to go. And to my horror, it was an inch short. And uh, I thought, oh, no, it take me a couple of hours to find one piece of wood in the house that would do this job. Uh, anyway, at that very moment, Sri Mashi walked into the bathroom and she could see that I was obviously a bit upset. And she said, uh, is everything all right, Alan? She said, and I said, uh, oh, mother, I said, I've spent ages looking for this piece of wood and I've measured it and I've cut it and now it's. I put it in and it's an inch too short. And she just gave me that knowing look. And she said, are you sure? She said, and I, and I said, yes, mother, I've measured it uh, twice and marked it and then cut it. And she said, she said, uh, you know, she said, just try it. She said, put it in the space. And I put it into the space and it was exactly the right length. So she wow. stretched the piece of wood. <laughs> <Incredible. laughs> And then she, she sort of smiled and walked off looking very <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> Never heard that story. Beautiful. Have you heard it? Oh. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, what was that, if I may ask, that's got nothing to do with the properties um, that uh, you all have had the good fortune to work on with Shrimataji. It's about the, uh, when you were walking with Shrimataji in Rome, Alan. And, oh, and... you want to tell that story, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so lucky that um, Mother was going to Rome. She was living at Nightingale Lane at the time. It was, I think it was 1982. And it was the early, I think it was one of her first visits to Rome. She'd been before, but, um, and, uh, I just out of the blue, I decided I was going to go to Rome uh, to be with Sri Mataji. So I just jumped on a train and went all the way on the train to Rome, got off the train and uh, was met by uh, Gilmet, I think it was. And um, he put my bag in a locker and immediately went up, putting posters up around Rome. And I ended up staying in the uh, flat with Sri Mataji. So there were very few yogis there and spent two of the most glorious weeks of my life in Italy um, before moving on to France. And uh, there were several things that happened. And on one particular occasion, we went shopping in Rome and uh, we'd been out for some time. And um, she actually was walking across the cobbles of the street and she was walking with very heavy limbs and finding it difficult. And um, we said to her, are you all right, Sri Mataji? Somebody did, I don't know who it was, but said, are you all right, Sri Mataji? And she said, she explained to us that uh, there were hundreds of souls hanging off her legs, begging for redemption. And um, so she then went on to explain that, um, this is what happens to us when we go out in the day, in our daily lives. There are these souls that want to come to her and they know we're sad yogis. So they, they cling on to us and they don't mean us any harm, but they, they know that this is going to be a route to the goddess. So uh, she said, what you do is you, you, you go out in the morning, you come back feeling very heavy. So you have your foot soaked put your hands towards the candle, and then all these souls hanging on to you go through the flame uh, to, to the goddess, and then they can take their rebirth. So um, it was, uh, you know, very, very enlightening to, to hear this, that there was, uh, that's why we felt so heavy sometimes when we've been out. But uh, yeah, it was very difficult to see Sri Majesty walking like that, um, virtually to the point of not being able to walk. Amazing, yeah. thank you. For she said she said that these souls are in a they're in a state of limbo. Yeah, they can't they can't take a birth, and they're stuck, and uh, so that's why they would cling on to her to to be able to get this redemption and take another birth. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, Fergie, would you please share your story? I, I'd like to add something about what um, Grezina was just yes. saying. I was in the house. Um, when you come in the front door, um, that first staircase there, I remember being there and then looking around. Shumashi was at the bottom of the stairs and I turned around and I turned back and she was already at the top of the stairs. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So what people don't know in the early days, Shumashi used to read our minds. So anything you used to think of, she would sometimes explain to you what you were thinking. So it was mm. good to only have good thoughts. So um, when she turned back round and saw me like flabbergasted, she said, oh, it's Sri Hanuman. He carries me everywhere. Yeah. And uh -huh. I and she just carried on walking. I was like, wow. And then um, I remember when we were doing work in the house, she said to me, before you start work in the mornings, you should say the mantra to Sri Ganesha, Sri Hanuman, and then they will remove all the obstacles mm. um, in the way of the work. So we, we, so, uh, we did, uh, you know, used to do that. And um, there was one time when, I don't know, there's this thing where you think, you you want to do more so one day i i worked till late i think maybe 10 o'clock in the night and and uh finished off something 
and I went staggered back home. And then I came in late in the morning and she actually asked me, why, why are you late? And I said, oh, I was doing this plaster and this ceiling for you. And she said to me, I didn't ask you to do that. And I just, you know, realized that sometimes we want to sort of do things to impress uh, and all that because, so after that, because that was the first main house, I noticed that lots of people wanted to do things to impress dramatity. And then when she used to come back, she used to tell them whatever they've done, take it all down completely. Mm -hmm. she, didn't, she didn't have this notion of it's done, so that's it. Even when we were working in maybe Pratishtan, people would build a wall and it was, even if it was six inches out, when she came back, she would say, knock the whole lot down and do it again. So it was, she didn't have compromise for things, but I just backtrack just to say that when I finished the work at Shudi Camps, Shumachi asked me to go straight to uh, India, uh, to Pratishtan, but at the time it wasn't, I, I just couldn't do it. So uh, she said, okay. And then later on, I was, uh, she came back to uh, England and she said to me, uh, you're coming to India with me. And at that time I, I, I could go. And I said to she, her, Shamashi, I don't have no money because at the time the tickets were like quite expensive. She said, oh, don't worry, just speak to the leader, Ooh, you'll buy you a ticket. So uh, it was just the two of us, we traveled, uh, to India. What what year was that? Uh, it was that was eight that was eighty eight. Okay. We travelled to India, arrived there, went to the leader's house, and we got met at the airport. Obviously, lots of sadhus. They had a chair for her. We went to the leader's house. She was discussing lots of things about the India tour. But what I noticed is people were making suggestions to Shrimatji, which were like not practical. And then she was like correcting them. So it was like being there was like being a witness, just little things. Like she said, okay, we're going to get a hairdresser for the India tour. Uh, and then people were saying, oh, you need to charge the people this much. And she said, no, it, just because they're so jokies, you shouldn't overcharge them. She was really uh, practical, uh, you know, yeah. like that. You know, she didn't like people being ripped off just because the Westerners have got money. So when I arrived in Pratishtan, for the first week, Shumashi didn't speak to me, said nothing. Uh, wow. You know, we were, I, she said, I can't travel in the car with her. You uh, travel with the leader uh, in his four wheel drive. And when we were passing through all these checkpoints, we drove at night because normally they want a bribe you know, the, the, on, on the route, police will pull you over. Yeah. So we got through all that. And then uh, when I arrived for the first week, Shamashi didn't say nothing to me, nothing. Every day I would go to see her, I would bow. She didn't say nothing. So I just used to go to Pune. Uh, How did you deal with that? Because it could be quite um, um, quite difficult, the goddess no, and not no, speaking, no, or you were just no, connected, it wasn't, you felt it, the connection? It, no, it wasn't. It was all right, because I'd been working with her since 81, and this was 80. Eight, isn't it? So, so yeah. I, so I just, for a week without conversation, it really didn't sort of uh, matter. Well, I, to oh, I didn't want to bother her. If she wanted not to talk, it was fine. So I just went to Pune. Sure, sure. Have I went? I found a juice bar, bought, bought some English newspapers, reading it up. And after a week, someone said Shimashi wants to see you. So I went to see her, and then she said, "Oh, you see all that plaster work which has been done." I want you to take it all off and do it all again. Because when I arrived there, I said, why am I here? It's already plastered. And she said, no. She said, take it all off. And I was like, oh, my God. So she said, I'm going to give you some uh, people to help you. So I had some little boys, maybe 10, 11, with little hammers to chip off all the plaster of Paris, which they put on. And then, yeah. uh, so they took it. So they took it all off. But I, what I discovered with English Indian scaffolding, um, you have to arrange something two weeks in advance. So if I wanted to plaster a ceiling, I had to give them two weeks' notice. 
because they tied all the scaffolding was tied with bamboo isn't it so then I would plaster the mm. ceiling and then the walls halfway down then they would take the scaffold away I would go into another room so it it, 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 it continued like that and everything was made easy I because I knew what was going to happen I brought this special chemical it was a special salt to go in the plaster because with plaster of Paris it goes off in 10 minutes but the same man, which me and John use from Birmingham, he gave, he told me there's a special chemical which the Indians didn't know about. I had that with me. Not, not sodium chloride then? Uh, no, it's a different one. Trade secret. So a pinch okay. like this <laughs> was, enough, was enough for a bucket and a scoop like this um, was enough for the big 40 gallon uh, drum. Oh. So I could do a, it, then it would take me 20 minutes for it to go off so Shumashi said I'm giving you a plasterer uh you train him up and the two of you work together but before I left England she said in England in India there's nothing bring everything you need so I brought some spare English trowels the Indian ones are different so every time Shumashi went away on the tour or somewhere the uh, the Sahaj foreman would sack my plasterer right uh, so I would say I was, I was, where, where is he? So I would, he, he would, he, they were on the camp. There was a camp there. So I would go to him and say, what, are you not working today? He said, no, the, the foreman has said, I need to take half wages and, not, and I'm not doing it. So I said, oh God. So I used to come back and say to the Sahaj foreman, look, when Shumashi comes back next week and says, why is this work not done? I'm going to have to say, you have stopped the work. But what do you want to do about it? And then he would say, "Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah." He could be reinstated, and then I would. <laughs> <laughs> then I would have. I would go to the plaster and say, "Look, you're not going to get half wages." His sister was there carrying the cement on her head. The dad was a bricklayer plasterer. Uh, you know, he was also a bricklayer. So it, it was stop and start work. But I could not, like, be in meditation. I had to physically, like, lay down a law, and but say in a nice way. Otherwise, he would complain. So I would have to say, uh, yeah. you know, say. So that's how the work carried on. But everything I was doing, Shumashi made it easier in the yeah. sense that there was another side yogi there. And uh, I won't say his name, but everyone knows him. He was the electrician and uh, from England. So Shumashi used to give him harder and harder tasks. He didn't have a kango, so he had to chop out the ceiling for the cables, with just a hammer and a chisel. Oh my God, it was taken forever. And he was, you know, swearing and just everything was like more and more harder uh, for him. But she gave me lots of people to help me and everything was like easy. And we shared the same, uh, we shared the, shared the same room. So I could just feel his frustration. But luckily for him, he was mm -hmm. married to an Indian lady and the in-laws lived not far away walking. So for Sunday, he used to go for, um, you know, roast or whatever, Sunday roast. But I would just say one, one day the police and the army were going to come and inspect the place. And Shumashi uh, said, said some of the other workers had to go. So I said to her, oh, uh, do you want me to leave? She said, no, 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 they will regard you as Indian. So don't, don't worry about it. So I didn't have to go and hide. So, wow. yeah, everything went smooth. After six months, my ticket was going to be up. And then Shumashi said, oh, uh, can you stay a bit longer? So I said, oh, fine. So I, I you know, I changed my ticket round and I stayed a, a bit longer. But I remembered that um, I wrote a diary uh, and I've got photos. So I, I, I hope to sort of uh, publish that. But throughout the whole time there, there was lots of obviously dramas. And I remember there's a you want to share some of the photos with the story that uh, if you have them oh, to hand. Yes. This one here is uh, Shumataji and Baba Mama. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is when the work was sort of, uh, there was uh, some yeah. third yogis came on the tour. Uh -huh. And uh, it was swamped uh, 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 with people. And um, uh -huh. I've got some, uh, just a second. When the work was mainly sort of done, and the back, you know, same like Gresham as one. 
but I've also got um, also um, this is the staircase inside. There is, uh, I think, uh, Yogi Mahajan and Shumashi is coming down. What um, Pat was saying as well is that the staircase, when it was built one time, when mm -hmm. it hit the top landing, it was halfway up. You know, when you come through the door, it's normally it's like six foot. They miscalculated. So they had to knock it, knock a part of the staircase down. They were like, oh, it's done now. So, you know, mother was saying, no, no, take the whole lot down. She never like compromised yes. any of the uh, any jobs that people had done uh, badly. That's harsh and uh, oh. Yogi Mahajan. And the other thing is a little story. Um, she asked, there was a problem with water. So she got the the, the side yogis to um, make, she asked them to make a well. This is Pratishtan? In Pratishtan, yeah, to make a well. But over in India, they use what you call, like, I don't know, dynamite or something. Oh, my oh. God. It was it was blowing up and hitting the side of the building. Everyone had to dive for cover. There was no, like, warning. Oh, oh my God. Because the, the next door neighbor um, had allowed them to use his well. And then, but he got jealous. So Shumashi said, in the meantime, let's make our own well. So they made a well. And then that man's well dried up. <laughs> so, so, and their mother's well was fine. So he came to, <laughs> he, he came to like apologize. And their mother, I think, must have told someone to go and put some vibrated water in it. And, uh, and then wow. it, it, it started again. But no, but just to say that this person who was trying to stop the work, one of the Rakshasas was his brother. And he, we, we, one time there was a Navratri and we actually had a, uh, we, they made a, a big like um, effigy of the two of them. And we, uh, they filled it. I don't know if you know, in India, it's a bit mad because they fill this huge effigy with fireworks. Yes. Yes, they did do it at the time of uh, uh, Navratri with uh, Dushera. Yeah. To signify the return of Sri Rama yeah. to Ayodhya, so the somebody, victory of good over evil. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody gave Shumashaji a bow and arrow, and then um, she took the bow and then they lit the, um, the the arrow and then put it into the effigy. But the day before, some packing cases have arrived with lots of straw and paper and everything. So they made this quick uh, effigy, huge it was. And then it started going off with fireworks and everyone had to run, you know, because they were just. But um, yeah, so, uh, uh, and I remember being there and Laurent, they said, oh, this is a window made by Laurent. It was an English window, the one which oh. goes up and down, but it's always stuck close, <laughs> close, halfway open or halfway closed. I can't remember. <laughs> they said, but it was huge. Laurent, Amazing. Laurent. Yeah, she might have wanted this big English window. She said, we need to have one English sash window in, in, uh, in Pakistan. Yeah? So yeah. Uh, the only wood we had was hardwood, which is very heavy. Yeah? Plus the window was oversized, so even heavier. And of course, the sash window, they have this counterweight inside the, the casing for the thing to go up and down. Yeah? So we had to melt some lead to get the right weight. And by the time the thing was finished, you needed four people to move the window, basically. Yeah? It was that <laughs> wow. heavy. Yeah? And where I, is I this know, window the then? The condition in India, the, the, the kitchen wood probably was swelling and all that and, and stopped working. I, I, I wasn't there anymore to, to correct it, unfortunately, but I think that uh, uh, the English window was made, was put into place, but whether it ever opened or closed after that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to let you know. Just unrealistic that, a window that side with that sort of wooden material. Yeah. Of course, today I wouldn't know better, but you know, we had to work with whatever was there. So. Just to finish it off. When, when the side yogis came, I actually, uh, um, I thought to myself, because I used to do recordings of Sri Mataji, I thought, oh, let me record. So I've actually found recently a recording, which I made, where Sri Mataji walked around the house with the side wow. yogis and described all the rooms and said which room was for which daughter and, and stuff like that. So it, 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 wow. it, that's, that's quite, it's audio. Uh, and also... We've, I don't know if people know, there's a book called Nine Nights of Navaratri. Yes. 
which we uh, give out as a PDF or a book. It's made into a book. So I I'd recorded that. And recently, Sajogi from America contacted me saying, we, we want all the old stuff. So I've actually got photographs from the Nine Nights and the, the tape recordings of each day of the puja. And um, Shimachi was talking about, you know, lots of things. But this is the puja in Pratishtan you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, Navar the Navaratri. I won't mention his name, but what happened is there was a there was somebody in charge who was meant to come and do the puja, the puja. Right. So he was late. So Shamashi said, "Where were you?" He said, "I was meditating uh, in the house in his house." And she said, "I'm here in person." Well, was... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... that's it. But uh, we okay. record so that. That's been what I'm saying is that Navaratri is being recorded. It's been made into a book. But not all of it, I think, is in uh, the book. So we need to update it because when we have Navaratri, everyone misses off the 10th day when you're meant to burn the Ravana. Mm. So, uh, which we used to... Okay. Do. Right. Um, Fergie, thank you very much. I hope these resources are on uh, Amrita. Is that right? Lots of the things are, but we can. I can arrange yeah. it. I've got the... Yes, I've got That'd the connection with Ambruta. We can arrange it. That all thank you so much. Go together. Fab. Last but not the least, and I know it's it's beyond lunchtime. And thank you all so much for <laughs> taking so much time out. I didn't. I, I don't think any any one of us thought it would go on this long. Hadev, would you please share a story with us uh, before we conclude today's session? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. I'd go back to Pratistan, 88. I think it was the time when most of uh, John, I think Pat, had already left. Um, Fergie was still there. Terry was still there. And there was also an Indian um, electrician there at that time who then started to help Terry was Mohan. And oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd just arrived. I just uh, had a had a very, very long um, train ride from my family in North India, arrived at Pratistan, my glasses were broken, and uh, saw Fergie as he was heading off to Pune, oh, and uh, ended up uh, following uh, Fergie to Pune and uh, managed to find uh, an optician to get my glasses repaired, and um, not knowing that Shramataji was waiting for me. And when we came back, um, we got a message that Shramataji was angry and she wanted to see me. And I remember going upstairs and um, she sort of like blasted me and said, yeah, if you're gonna carry on like this, then you might as well leave, you know? And I said, no, Shramataji, if you want me to work, I, I work, I'm here to work. And um, well, that was another very, very hard brunt side where Shramataji sometimes really when she got yeah. angry, you, you you know, it was like decisiveness inside yourself. You know, why are you here? Why are you a yogi? You know, uh, what's your purpose here? Yeah. And uh, it was just, uh, it, it was partly a shock, but then, you know, then you automatically then have to decide, you know, why are you here and what are you doing, you know, in that sense. And then um, she got me doing the plumbing in the house, you know, where, um oh that was it was just very strange because I'd never I, I'd never ever really done plumbing at that time just helping Pat now and again and and um like in in duty camps and um and in the end I ended up doing all the main runs of all the steel piping going up mm -hmm. to the swimming pool that in the roof and there was one pool Brilliant. downstairs in front of the the foreyard and I um at that time, we were having lots of problems with the the authorities. This was not the <clears throat> wasn't the public authorities. It was somebody had actually started then creating problems from the army camp, which was further up the the road, saying that Shermatage had tapped into the water line. And um, at that same time, as Fergie was saying, there was the well was being bored. Mm -hmm. So every day there was uh, in the morning, mostly, mainly from seven o'clock in the morning till midday, they would do the blasting. You know, the men would uh -huh. drill holes with metal metal spears 
um, and break holes deep enough that they could put the dynamite inside, pack them, and then they would scream, take cover, and, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, there was a wow. huge explosion. And um, yeah, the time there was very special because um, most nights then Shumataji invited us into um, her apartment and we either watched movies with mm -hmm. her. Um, there were some very, very beautiful occasions where we had spontaneous pujas with Shumataji. We were allowed to offer kumkum to her feet. And um, the other days where she would just sit there and talk to us. Uh, it was very, very much... Um, elevating you know it wasn't you know even though we were working hard the whole day and then you'd sit with traumatogy till one or two o'clock in the night and then you'd uh, go to bed you know you were up again at six o'clock in the morning meditating breakfast, then working again and um there was the period where then my visa ran out for india and i was um traumatogy was heading off then north and um, she, we'd stayed the whole, we'd, we'd stayed awake the whole night uh, to see her off because she was leaving at four o'clock in the morning. And uh, we'd prepared some coconuts to um, break in front of the car before she drove away. And there she asked me if I'd like to come with her to, um, to Delhi. And the next wow. one was my flight, you know, so that was... Uh, uh, I just remember telling her, yeah, Shumata, I'm sorry, but my flight, my visa runs out, my flight's tomorrow. And um, yeah, that was a very special, that was a very special stay in Pratistan. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm aware we are really running behind time, especially for um, uh, Laurent and her Dave, who have joined from uh, Austria and France. Um, I joined from Cabela actually, a greeting from... You're in Cabela. Uh, so you're like an hour ahead. It is half yeah, two years, uh, 30, 30 years, here, but years, you guys uh, must be starving. Thank you so much for your time, patience. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, first and foremost, thanks to Srimataji for giving us this opportunity to, to remember these beautiful times with her. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Stop recording now.